Practice Podcast, where we cover the only sport in the world where there is no practice. With your mini rod driving host, Adam Kester, Tyler Slaw, and Chase Richardson. Strap in for some debates on the world of pulling, exclusive special guests, and a whole lot of nonsense BS. The No Practice Podcast starts now. Now. How about that backstage uh, holiday Christmas music? I, that was uh, that was some good stuff. High production high quality. Culture. Pulling fans, welcome back. Episode six, the No Practice Podcast. We started out with zero fans uh, a month and a half ago, two months ago. We're up in the thousands. In fact, we're approaching 50,000 different viewers across all of our platforms. And it's all because of you, the fans. For those of you tuning in for the first time, some of you Billy Beers fans, we'll get to him later. Or of our repeat fans, we love you. We're back again. We're here. To, we're only here to promote the, the only sport in the world where there is no practice. And we like to have fun doing it. So welcome back, episode six. I just mentioned our guest for episode six, our first ever inaugural fan vote. Thousand plus fans voted on this. Uh, the most powerful motorsports class in the world, the Olympic class. We had a runaway victory, in fact. Um, there was a late charger late. Uh, some stories, I think, went into that. But our runaway victor, the one and only Billy Beers, he will be joining us. Uh, we had quite the entertaining pre-show interaction with Mr. Billy himself. But he'll be joining us halfway in. Prior to that, we're going to have some fun, be honest, tell the truth, and, again, promote the only sport in the world where there is no practice. And for you fans that are tuning in, we go from zero to near 50,000 because we're not putting a lot of – we're putting zero marketing dollars in this. Adam's trying, we're trying to get Adam to give his sponsorship money up to market this, but zero marketing dollars. And it's because you guys spread the word, keep spreading it. Tell everybody at Christmas, the best, best podcast, top tempers in the world, new to the sport, and the no practice podcast. Joining by my two co hosts, I will be nice to both of you this show. Uh, nothing but respect for both of you guys. Uh, Mr. Tyler Saw, Adam, reverse takeoff, Chester. Yes, I did not forget about it, Adam. It's only been. Three shows since I brought it back up, but for you fans that don't know in the intro, Adam takes off sometimes in the uh, only sport in the world where there's no practice in reverse. So, Adam, Tyler, good to so- good to see you guys. Adam, what's been new in your world? Does a new, oh. does a new tractor have does your new tractor have a uh, the difference between forward and reverse? Can you tell which one you're in when you take off? Well, I don't know. Uh, we got a new transmission and saying, I hope to God I can figure out which way to go. I asked directions from you. I think you're going to sabotage the answers, though. How's it going, everybody? It's been a couple weeks. Been anxious to get back on here. It's good to see that we got more followers on this page already than NTPA got all last year with their live streaming. So we're just knocking it out of the park. Oh, you're We're here here to promote the sport, Adam. We're here to promote the sport, not throw out allegations you can't back up. But 50,000, we're approaching 50, people. We're approaching 50. We're, we're approaching, we're approaching. I think we're coming off our, ba- our best episode we had last week, or two weeks ago with the Simons. Man, that was pretty interesting. Uh, getting those guys to liven up a little bit, tell us some stories. I think it was uh, it was awesome hearing from them and and, and all the little, little innuendos of things that they put out there. So um, I think those guys were great. I think this week is going to be just as good with uh, Billy Beers. He's an awesome dude. Uh, happens to be a customer, a customer of mine, just like most of the, uh, people on this show, their customers are mine. I don't know how this works out this way, but, uh, he's quite the character. Can't wait to see with this, with this little pre-show thing that we had going on with him here. We, we, sh- we might be having some technical difficulties with him, but, uh, always, uh, be prepared to hear anything when it comes out of Billy's mouth. So it should be good. Uh, but everything's been going pretty good. How about yourself, Tyler? How have you been well, the last couple weeks? Uh, it's been going pretty good. I'm uh, looking forward to the uh, getting on the podcast as always. Uh, we should warn Billy uh, during you know some of our segments. Maybe he does want to be careful what he says. Uh, you guys mentioned the Simon segment we had uh, during Brandon's little two truths one lie. Uh, he made a little joke about you know getting into some uh, pot every now and then and uh, 
for those not in the know, he got called in for a drug test the day after. So we don't know who's all listening. There's plenty of people listening. And unfortunately, maybe some uh, people responsible for uh, putting some drug tests out there listening. So Tal, I'm ready. Tal, to you all drug tested your business? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of you. course. Of course we do, Chase. Uh, just before you interrupted me there, I don't know if that was an interruption or not. You hit a gap. I'll give that to you. But we've got a we've got a fresh slate on the uh, Chase interrupts board, and uh, even Brian Heater, you know, checking in, saying loving the podcast, except for you always interrupting towards Chase. But we brought the interruption board uh, in last two weeks ago, last episode for the first time. Great feedback. People are telling us it's really settling you down. You're holding your words to yourself. <laughs> gap of conversation so uh this is just us getting this thing dialed in and figuring it out i'm liking where we're going i finally speaking got of, speaking of drug tests i'm gonna interrupt chase here for a minute speaking of drug tests um chase weren't you uh just across the border smuggling some uh drugs back through your butt or did you use hunting as an excuse as you were in mexico this past week well, I mean, did anybody see the rack Chase was hanging out with this past weekend in Mexico? One of the biggest racks I've seen Chase with in a long, long time, personally. <laughs> Who doesn't like a nice rack, all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's close. That's close. Yeah. yeah. It might be enhanced. Yeah. For, for our audio-only listeners, look at the size of this buck. It's huge. How many points is that, Chase? Well, no, hang on. We Not to interrupt Chase here, but look at the angle of Chase's foot. Is this a wide-angle fisheye lens? Chase, a proper hunter would have his foot back to lead to the illusion that the rack is larger than it is. I mean, right there, your foot looks larger than your body, does it not? You know, to help me in mini rock competition, to get an edge of my competitors, I'm a recreational yoga guy, and last week I, I didn't do yoga because I was in Mexico, so... What better time to do yoga than when a large deer's right in your lap? So that was me just getting a good stretch in. But no, oh, is, um, is is that no. your favorite position? What is your favorite position in yoga? The downward dog, most likely. <laughs> for for those not visually listening to this and are just tuning in on uh, iTunes and Spotify and whatnot, what we're looking at here is Chase with all nonsense aside. An absolutely monster buck that he killed out in Mexico. Chase, were you saying it is the largest deer harvested out of Mexico in the year 2023? Is that correct? So I would love to get on here and act like I'm like the Sheltons and I'm a big time hunter, like live, breathe and sleep it. I do like going hunting, but I'll just be quite frank. I like going with people that I'm friends with or like being with or when I like to go have a few adult beverages or two. But when it's time to dial in and, and the buck walks out, you got to focus. Um, that was a, so first off, Mexico, hunting in Mexico, there are no rules. You just do, it's like, um, I don't know, what's a good pulling analogy? It's like, it's like going to, uh, to a brush pull uh, or it's like, yeah, it's like going to a brush pull, mini rod pulling where nobody uh, measures the hitches or measures how far in and out and hitches are. That was a problem one time in the meteor rock class, but you go out there, there are no, there are no roles you hunt and went last week, got an invite with uh, my dad and a good friend of ours. Um, and it was, it was actually a very surprising trip for me because I'd go to Mexico, you go to the beach and, and, and hang out in the sand and so forth. But you, we went to this private, you know, uh, guided ranch for hunting and was it a zoo? Yeah. That thing. <laughs> no, so actually actually my dad uh someone back home made the comment because i have so many people that love me back home that my dad paid for me to go kill this large deer down in mexico because i can't hunt one back home and so it's typical uh my dad just went and bought him held him down and i just walked up and shot him so that was no, really how it, i got him is it true that dave held the deer in a rear naked chokehold while you shot it so the funny part, I'll try not to get make this too long, but we would, our friend of ours, Kevin Lusk, is good friends with this outdoorsman named Brian Pigman Quaka. If you don't know him, look him up. The dude is probably one of the top two or three personalities in the outdoor world, and he has his own show and his own uh, – he don't have a podcast, but he has his own following. And didn't really know we were going there to, to for a Hollywood scene and <laughs> get there on Monday and – I was assuming I was just going to go hunt with a, a rifle and 
this pig man guy, and he, he's a, he's quite the character, comes up and he's like, here, here's this bow you got hump this crossbow. And I'm like, I don't know how to hump that crossbow. He said, well, it's for the camera. It's for the sponsors. The guy sponsored by whatever brand this was. So go out there and shoot it at one time. Okay, sounds good. Next morning, there's six or seven of us there. I figured everyone goes their own ways. And the pig man had a little too much fun the night before, and he didn't get up. And he has his camera crew there, and he's like, okay, well, I'm going with you. We're going to go hunt. I'm like, I'm not – I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so this dude literally is following us, and we go, and we get in this high-rise little Tahoe, and you ride around, and within like – Yeah, can we can we pull that picture back up again so we can see what's in the background of that, please? <laughs> I want to see this. Like, it's hard to, it's hard to tell because Chase's big head is in the way, but – I see a Tahoe back there. It looks like an apartment on top of it that you ride around and shoot these things. I mean, what the hell kind of tree stand is this? It's like a pontoon on top of Tahoe. By the way, I think there's a there's a movement to get get that vehicle to Bowling Green, Ohio next year for the campground. It'd be epic, especially with some of the rule changes. But so you have these guides and you, you have this camera crew, the camera crew, camera and the guy who don't know that don't hunt or doesn't really know how to shoot a crossbow. We make one turn and this monster right here walks out in the the guys are speaking Spanish and they were starting to scream like, oh, 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 like speaking Spanish, like, oh my gosh, monster. And then they looked at me. I'm like, I guess I got shoot. And the camera's guy's like, well, yeah. So I take this crossbow and one of the other guys with us like, dude, it's too far to shoot a crossbow. And I've never shot one. It was 53 or four yards away. I line it up, shoot it, goes down. And these guys are jumping up and down like, well, ain't no big deal. Just shooting a crossbow. Well, long story short, if you look right there, see the crossbow laying on top of the, the deer. Well, I was actually there doing an advertisement for the pig man guy because <laughs> you get that deer, that crossbow, that's how he gets paid. But I was just, so, a so when does your episode come out? When does your episode of this big hunt where they're whispering in the microphone? Yeah, well, I don't know, but I'll be sure to share it to uh, this podcast whenever, whenever ready. And by the way, this pig man guy, so he only reason the cameras with me because he got drunk and hung over the next morning. I probably shouldn't say it publicly, but um he missed out, but dude, this guy is a freaking character. If you don't know who he is, look him up, fans. It's so what's funny. It, what's it going to take for us to get him on? What's it going to take for him for us to get him on this podcast? What's funny you ask that? So there's so, and we talk about we're here to literally grill a sport, but like this guy's he he's just like a Billy, like Billy Beers uh, or my dad or uh, Wayne Purser or Joe Eater. Like all these guys are like the same type of guys, except this guy has a camera and he hunts for a living, and we spend a time with them. We're explaining tractor pull and I'm with them for three or four, for four days. And by the second day we are showing him videos, you know, his words are, he's like, how the hell do I not know about this? Like this guy has a following of, you know, 2 million people or one and a half million people. And they're like, he's like, how do I know? Like somebody's not doing their job. How do I not know about this? And honestly, that's a fair question. I'm not sitting here to say like, it's easy to bitch and I have a solution, but a guy like that who doesn't know anything about it, after a day or two, he's already talking about coming to a poll. Um, I think we need to try to get him on this podcast because he's uh, he's got a following and he's pretty – and, you know, there are parallels in terms of what guys that like to hunt like and, and tractor pull and be one of them. But if a guy like that – if a guy like that has a million followers and Jason Schultz, for heaven's sake, he, I mean, this guy has 1.2 million followers, but he's the only thing that pulling has. Like, like how does – like, how – like, Billy Beer should have 5 million followers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But – uh, oh, there's a lot, this podcast being one of them, there's a lot of good things we're, we're going to try to do to help grow this sport. But yeah, the pig man is, uh, definitely a future guest. We need to try to get on here and we'll, we'll see what we can do, but look him up. Pig man talk, Quaka. Talk, talk us through that. Like, give us just a quick 30 seconds right around it. Were you like super nervous to, you know, pull the trigger, like you're backed into the slide. How did it compare zero to 10, you know, on the scale of Chase's nervous? Honestly, I, w I have no idea what I'm doing at all, and I, I just got it up and shot it. And I was tired of these dudes bitching at me in Spanish for not being, like being ready to go. So I'm like, all right, fuckers, I'll show you. I'll shoot this thing. So I'm so, not a good. So hunter, there was a little bit of was, wording there that, uh, you know, obviously this is a farm and there's a fence around it, but apparently nobody on this farm has ever seen that deer before on all on any of the cameras. Correct? I mean, it, was it the, is a uh, monster. You know, yeah, and on, and I would say I'm tooting my own horn, but I don't even care about hunting that much. No offense to hunters, but we took it and scored it. And this is the funniest part. Whenever we took it to the Mexican Fish and Wildlife, whatever they call it in Spanish, we brought it in there. They're like they started like hugging me, and they gave they're like they're like 
speaking their Spanish and they pointed to the wall and they showed like the, they had like a, a number system of the biggest score bucks killed all this year. And that buck was number one. They gave me an embroidered jacket, all kinds of shit. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm That's a, pretty I'm good for a guy who doesn't care jacket. about hunting. No, I do care just only when it's time to. Yeah. Well, that's pretty funny. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I, I do care about hunting, but I go for the fellowship and the uh, I figured it social out social aspect. We figured it out. You don't care about the hunting because you were down there to smuggle some uh, maybe illegal substances in your prison wallet back across the border. I mean, Biden's got that fucker wide open, so I'm sure oh, you were bringing all kinds of stuff over. I mean. What did you shove up your rear end to get across? Guys, I mean, what was it? Just because, I, just because I revealed to the thousands of people in the show that I one time did mushrooms does not mean I do drugs. I stand by that statement. Yeah. Chase is a degenerate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, pre- highly recommend. Wallet was T- full. Tune into the pigman. Yeah, yeah. So, um, switching gears here. Enough with the hunting. People aren't here for hunting; they're here for pulling. Quiet little buzz that's going around. Obviously, it's December. We're coming on mid-December. No word on the Farm Machinery Show yet. Who's in, who's out. We'll talk about that here in a second. But if you want tickets to the Farm Machinery Show, your last chance to get free tickets is ends tomorrow, th- being Thursday. Uh, go to fullpool.us. You can access it via Facebook or just go directly online, fullpool.us. There's four different classes. You make your predictions of who's in, who's out. You get them all right. You get two free tickets for the week at the Farm Machinery Show. Not saying I know when letters are going out. All I'm saying is that that game ends tomorrow. So um, Farm Machinery Show coming up after the new year. Obviously, we'll be doing a lot of talking about that premier event. But last chance is tomorrow. Make sure you log on and play. You listeners on Spotify and Apple. Uh, was it Apple? Download iTunes? Or I don't know what it is. Log on. Full pull yeah, US and play. Like yeah. So, but speaking so of the Tell me about show, the Farm Show. How how does that process even work? Like, how do you know who gets in, who doesn't? I realize it's kind of like Santa Claus where everybody sends letters out and then they cross their fingers that they get one back. But, you know, being a underprivileged mini rod puller, you know, we don't get to run there other than at the truck show. So tell us about the farm show process, Mr. Richardson. You've been there with your two wheel drive truck. You know how this magic works, right? Yeah, you just uh, do a podcast and they put you in there automatically, they said. Oh, is that how that works? No. no. Is, that how, uh, is, is that how Jason Schultz is going to get into that pool? I mean, well, here, here we those, go. We got, those, a, we got a perfect hang on, scenario. Hang on, hang on. Let's, let's explain. Remember, there's people new Ding to the that sport. Up, let's Tyler. explain that. Well, no, you – yeah. Oh, well, everyone's got to start somewhere. One's a start. So, for those of you who don't know, the Farm Machine Show, the biggest pool in the world, uh, probably outside Bowling Green, Ohio, it's very prestigious one because it's in February. It's in its it's a standalone event, nothing else going on. But it's probably even more prestigious because it's invitation only. And how that process works to to back to what Tyler said, literally, they I don't know the total amount of classes, but if you have a vehicle and you pull anywhere, they have an application, you apply for it, they decide who's in, who's out. There's no public criteria or public known method they use to make selections but typically it, it's tied in with results and resulting but i think what adam was getting into there sometimes there's no explanation for some guys so what were you saying adam uh, i was just wondering you know you show? brought up you brought up <clears throat> a good point there about how you get in i mean so take for instance this diesel super class and alcohol super stock class the dual of the fuels as you will um jason schultz recently just brought bought mike beck's high-tech redneck i mean Obviously, it's a very competitive tractor. Um, you know, e- even even as you look at all the classes, sometimes there's a lot of moving and shaking around with drivers and different vehicles and stuff. I mean, it is very hard to get into this pool. Do you think that they uh, what what all goes into them making that decision to allow him in there? I mean, Who is he going to get in? I, is he not? So you you I must think know we'll something nobody else knows. Just just because they want to make it the dual of the fuels, and I feel like there is more alcohol tractors than diesel tractors. Um, for those people not super in the know, so usually you've got you know your unlimited super stock, and then you've got your diesel super stock class. And numbers are decent in both of them, but at the farm show, it's just 
unlimited super, open super stock, I forget the wording, but basically they force the diesels to run against the alcohol tractors like Colin Ross does all the time. So it's the one time of year where all the diesels jump in the class, run against the alcohol tractors. I feel like because there's more alcohol ones than diesel ones, we're going to see Jason Schultz with the high-tech redneck get into the farm show. Plus, if you're the one putting on that event, not that they need help getting publicity, but who promotes the sport better than Jason Schultz in his videos? So I feel like putting him into the farm show is just a dead ringer. Yeah, the guy that has 1.2 million followers is beyond me. And he's, he's like him or hate him, he's an ambassador for the sport because he has more of an audience than anybody. But I don't, you know, to, to his class specifically, I think him alone, Adam, is just, there's not that many diesel super stocks in the world. Right. Probably more than anything. I think some of the other classes, you, there's some head scratching. And the two wheel drive class and like the super farm class, when I mean, you look at, I mean, there's probably, a, I won't know 100, but there's probably 75 people that can make an argument that they're good enough to get in that event. But it's. There's a, there's a lot of hurt feelings at the end of it, too. I mean, I think there's a lot of people that are really let down that think they ran good enough to get in that don't get in there. And they. There's a little always drama behind, you know, who gets in there and who doesn't. And, um, you know, they do a pretty good job, though. I mean, the best way I can see is they take the top from PPL, they take the top from NTPA, top of Outlaws, and then uh, maybe some uh, some state, member state winners, championship winners that they let in there. I mean, it's really hard to narrow down what it is. So somebody's always going to feel like maybe somebody got in that shouldn't have. And, and you know... Thank God the minis aren't in there because, uh, you know, I don't know, in my opinion, if I, if I wanted to go, I want all mine in, you know, I'm sure everybody that, that wants to pull there wants all their vehicles in. So it's, it's kind of a blessing and a curse that we're not in there. Everybody wants to pull there, but then again, we don't have to put up the heartache of not being let in there, I guess. Well, they're just, it's a good thing they do it that way because that gives RJ Simon a chance to drive one of the pro stocks once a year. You know, he because wanted Brandon ago, can't right? drive both. Yeah, yeah, he won it. He won it all. Yeah. And the, the last comment I'll make in the farm mm -hmm. show, and the the hardest ticket in pulling is the farm machinery show. And I'm not saying that because of this contest, but it's Friday and Saturday. And even sometimes before that, you can't get a ticket if you don't have it in advance. And those tickets are not cheap at all. I mean, they're, I think it's like two over 200 bucks for uh, a week long pass for the week. And the reason why is, and this is my opinion, is, it's the only, for one, it's invitation, but, but secondly, it's the only event that we can go to, maybe outside Chapel Hill, where it's a controlled environment, meaning when you walk in the door, you probably have a pretty good idea when the pool's going to end. You're not going to be sitting there all night because there's 12 in each class. There's four classes total. And again, for putting on a show standpoint, an entertainment standpoint, not a pulling hobby standpoint, that's the way for a fan to be interested in it because, let's face it, the two-wheel drive class at the Farm Machinery Show is way, way more interesting than any other Grand National class all year because they have 20-plus everywhere they go. So, to me, that's something that the sport doesn't really probably emphasize enough or understand enough. The Farm Show is a farm show because it's been around forever, but there, it's also the farm show because it's prestigious. It means something to get in there. You just can't show up and pull. So. That just so, so the answer is nobody nobody has a damn clue how the process works other than kind of cherry picking some top ones. Nobody knows I, why you get the get the random ones in there. I do know I don't know, but I assume if you live nearby Louisville and you're from the Kentucky area, that may not hurt you because you're more likely to sell more tickets. But I don't know if that will help me get in or not, but we'll see. Okay. Well you're just explaining why you get in every year, right? <laughs> well, I I just uh, ju I just last year was like a startup again, so I don't know. We'll see. It's it, 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 right. just getting in that event's a, a honor in that two wheel drop class. It's all reason Chase well, started driving two wheelers again. So you just wanted to pull in the farm show. Yeah, yeah, that and about a lot of other reasons. But anyway, next topic. Let's go to. Yeah. Uh, well, I believe we're going to get into the uh, man. I wish there was practice segment. Uh, we introduced that segment two weeks ago where we watched our beloved chase, uh, you know, wreck his two wheel drive truck motor and tell the flagman to save himself. And we've got another fantastic video of a mini rod uh, going going poorly that we would like to share with everybody. Uh, eventually, we'll get to some of Adam and myself, but 
not right now. We're going to touch on a uh, pretty legendary video of a tractor that was new to the sport and unfortunately had a hired gun when the incident went down. You gentlemen so, probably well, know on, what I'm getting don't, at. Don't start the video yet. So the tractor was rather new and they had a hired gun. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, for, it, someone, it had for someone that order. doesn't know, for someone that doesn't know how much money was basically thrown out there for someone else to say, hey, go drive this 150K probably. I mean, yeah, at the, at the time, I mean, it, that was 10 years ago, right? I guess, but 10 years ago, the amount of money thrown Probably at this tractor was a lot at the time. And uh, it was, it was, a, imagine it was a now. very uh, capable tractor at the time of winning. So uh, it was uh, pretty heartbreaking to see what happened, but we just need to kind of walk everybody, at least our audio, vis uh, our audio listeners. Um, what we're going to show is a video clip of uh, pretty catastrophic damage to a mini rod, and uh, yeah. say the least. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. and then yeah. there there may or may not been some other things that on the end of that video that made it a little bit extra spicy. But um, yeah, Drum you guys roll. ready? You guys ready for the uh, video? Let's run Drum it. The No Practice Podcast. Man, I wish there was a practice segment. All right, OJ, hit that video. All right, here we see the fat assassin owned by Pete Miza, driven by Lee Swift, backed up to the sled, and he's ready to make a pass. Or Cole Indian. Check the kids off. He's getting up the throttle. It pivots. It heads to the left. It heads to the right. He oversteers. He's at a 45-degree angle. He rolls it onto the barrier, and it goes up in a ball of flames. And here's the owner, Mr. Pete Miza, jogs out under the track, pulls up his pants, turns, stops, and realizes what just went down as he hangs his head in sadness and walks towards the tractor. And I it feel looks bad to me like those pants are pretty high and tight, okay? They may be yeah. filling, <laughs> that, filling some that, crevices that there. A, it was a beautiful machine. And for the people that, okay, yeah. So Hang on, Lee's first off, first off, off from the start, is he yeah, not well, backed up crooked? Okay. No, no, no. He's no. like, yeah. I got this. He takes off from the sled. He's headed for the back corner. It's heading left because he was crooked. He overcorrects, heads back right, viciously overcorrects left. He's now at a 45-degree angle, does not back out. He's like, I got this. Pitches it, rolls it, hits the barrier. The injector hat lifts off. All the alcohol in the air ignites in a ball of fire. And, man, there's just significant damage. And we see a man running around the corner like, holy shit, what happened? And then he yeah. just realizes, yep, there goes all that money. And and that's a shame because he was a he was a fun attitude to the sport in my opinion to have he wasn't afraid to uh, talk some trash and get in there and mix it up with some people and yeah. he just watched his precious machine just get rolled into a barrier. So, now so Tyler, for you guys, pause, pause what, it right here. Pause it right here. Pause it right here, Tyler. At what point, you know, you, you've had your a couple of rollovers. Yeah, I've, I've, I've driven. I've, I've not. I've not yet had one. Keyword is yet, but it's coming one day. Yeah. At what point, right here, do you think going through your mind as a driver that I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this and win this class? Okay. So right here, I wouldn't have let out of it. You can let it play okay. more. I would I would have stayed in it. I'll be honest. Um. So it heads to the right. He's still in it. <laughs> no. Right okay, here. Right about, about right there. Here. What like, about right here? The thing yeah. is almost ninety degrees on the track, headed I'm, towards the wall. I'm probably gonna let out of it. And you know what? He may still roll over, but rolling over without hitting a barrier won't destroy your tractor it'll just get your chassis outlawed so right there he should have just chopped out of the throttle <laughs> and he should have just taken his poison and rolled it over okay what but about I right here where he's mission. still almost no he's still well, not out of the throttle yeah uh, right there it's he's got the front open. end buried buried into the dirt and the back tires are up and in his defense you do get thrown forward so i mean just the momentum applies a bit of throttle because of the way the world works and when those tires slap back hit, and hit, hit the, the slide it pitches that thing into a concrete barrier Man, look how crooked the so rear hard. end is to the fenders like the tires yeah. are like at a very different angle than what they should be definitely yes. definitely messed up so even right there and then boom still right there he was still into the throttle the that barrier i call he's it, laying on the is it i call it about halfway through that run when it was getting crooked 
I, I say about the time it takes the hard left and starts heading towards the wall, you ran out of talent to fix it because it is yeah. not going to go good from there. Just I can admire his willingness to ride it out. And then just a ball of flames, <laughs> the fact that it ends like that. This, okay. folks, right oh, here, Tyler, this video you... is, is, is proof why the NTPA uh, tech officials are, are extremely worried about mini rod pullers because of stuff like this. The problem is, is he could have got out of it 30 seconds before he did and would have alleviated and any problem. For that. I love the him 40, for that. The 45 degree angle going straight to the crowd and not letting out of it. All right, I really guys, right I, I, right there. I haven't right talked there. in a while, but I'd like to, I'd like to quick phone in the owner of this tractor and pick his thoughts. He's probably still here. depressed because of this Tyler. Did this tractor yeah. ever run again? No. <laughs> no. It did not. The only thing it ran into was that wall. <laughs> yeah, Pete, how's it going? This is Tyler Slaw. Yeah, how are you? Good, good. So uh, I don't know how in tune you are with the polling world anymore, but uh, me and Mr. Adam Kester and Chase Richardson do a little podcast called the No Practice Podcast. And uh, we talk about polling mostly, and it's a whole lot of nonsense and BS. And we've got you live on that right now. And we're discussing the infamous video of unfortunately your tractor with Mr. Lee Swift piloting the machine where it tags that barrier. And I mean, talk us through what was going through your head during it, after it, when it happened, give us your take on it. So the night before we got the pool. Nice. The next, the next day it rained most of the day and I put uh, new bearings in it. Stuff we, I ran the, Ran the motor pretty hard. Not as hard and as night I, two, Pete. <laughs> no, it, it was run. It was set on kill pretty much. Well, you and, killed it. Well, yeah, we did. But uh, so, looking back at you know after the fact, when I started digging into it, the sled that that they provided wasn't an wasn't an, an improved mini sled yeah it just couldn't handle the power that you were putting down there is well, that right no so the the sled was a bigger sled okay okay and you can i don't remember all the my computer x amount of seconds into the run and it overlap with the video and mm -hmm. see that he had backed out of the that Lee had backed out of the throttle. Yeah. And the momentum, I when I looked at the GPS, I can't remember how fast it was going. Oh, plenty fast, it looked like. It was moving. It was moving. Yeah. It was like, like right. a good run to 35 to 40 mile an hour. But I don't know what, I can't remember. That's been 2013. But Yeah, uh, some people there said close to 50 by the time it hit the barrier. Well, I don't think it was quite 50, but the it was in the 30s, let's put it that way. Epic. Talk us, talk us through the moment when you, you know, right after the fireball and you walked out onto the tractor, in a, or out onto the track to see the tractor in a bit of a hurry, and you kind of pause, pull up your trousers, kind of turn around and look away from it, and turn back and look at the tractor. Tell us, at that moment, what was going through your head? I uh, just wondered, just to hope that everybody was hoping Lee didn't get hurt. And and he didn't. He was all right, correct? It, yep. And yep. just a Good. testament to our safety products in the sport, absolutely. Um, we got to give you credit for letting Lee pilot that thing. Um, uh, thank you very much for taking the call and give us and giving us your side of it. Did that tractor ever make another pass down the track? Uh, no. No? Oh. It's a shame. Man, you had it set on to kill, Pete, in more ways than one, and we admire that attitude, and uh, the sport needs more of that, sir. Yep. Well, thanks, Tyler. Yeah, it's been good hearing from you, Pete. We'll see you again this summer. Hopefully, you'll come to join the show. All right. Thank you, sir. See ya. Bye. And just to get Pete's side of that, guys, the fact that Lee was all right, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I might first have, tower. Even that's why they outlaw minis. 
That's right. I have to say, if I was the owner of that tractor, he may have been all right after the crash, but he wouldn't have been all right after he got done with me. Would you have been upset? A little bit. I mean, hope Toby's not watching. Yeah, right. Poor guy. Well, <laughs> just saying. My poor father, I don't know how much stuff I've destroyed on my tractors, and I can't afford to do this. So, unfortunately, yeah. he's got to foot the bill for the whole deal. Yeah, it's like that. my uh, my two-wheel drive incident that we showed last week. I mean, my dad never gave up on me, luckily. <laughs> what a guy. So, yeah. Thank you. Th- that was a shame, Mr. though. It really was. Uh, that was a very high dollar tractor at the time. Oh, beautiful yeah. piece. And um, it's just a shame that it got wrecked the way it did. But definitely a very viral pulling video. And and uh, I, I guarantee you, knowing Lee Swift, if he had it all over to do again, he would have lifted a lot sooner than he did. Um, no, we wouldn't be talking about him. We're never going to say, remember the time we didn't. All right. Yeah, yeah he, exactly. He gave shout, out to Pete, to shout out to Pete for coming on our show. Um, giving his yes, uh, thank you, Pete. That, 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 we that all sound depressed. We all had. sound very depressed, but we have to admit it's all pretty funny at the end, really. Because I know, mean, that was pretty good, right? <laughs> the, the, hey, if the it dep- wasn't for that sled, fellas, I mean, well, we all know good. that that sled it had a little bit longer wheelbase, but um, when you're 45 degrees on the track heading towards the barrier. Just get out well, of it. It's the 45-45 combo. 45 degrees at 45 mile an hour on a pulling track. That's just not going to I, I would well. I would like to see that uh, 50 mile an hour hitting that wall. That was pretty Remember funny. I, I had to snicker there a little bit. You, there's three sides those, to every story, Chase. We for understand. Those, for three those sides. Who, that weren't tuned in last week, there's three sides. We just heard his All right. Side. So, Adam, All right, we're going to get the wow. highlight. Yep. Time All right, guys. So, Adam, bring them on. And finally, after all the wait, we have to bring in our guest uh of the hour i guess as you say um billy beers is from albany new york area billy's a long time puller has been uh round and round for a long time i mean he really has he's 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 been at every pull he's done it all he's always had really good uh running equipment um and he's quite the this character that's that's, that's why we love him so much so Smile. Everybody, welcome Mr. Billy Beers in the War Wagon Unlimited pulling tractor. There he hey, Billy is. Beers. Billy, you're here. <laughs> How's it going, you Billy? Billy. How you doing, guys? PBR. Good. We're doing good. Chase. How you doing, Billy? What's going on, brother? It's good to Everybody, see you. You know, our. our Tyler uh, Swans, are you out there? Turn yep, your yep, hat I'm doing good. I, I don't you. like people that wear their hat backwards. <laughs> Okay, hey, sorry. that's better. Sorry. Just for you, Billy. That's a good you man. Right the bill you're a man. For you? <laughs> yeah, okay. Billy, Billy, you and Tyler have quite the stories from back in the Adam, day. Adam, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you, buddy? I like your uh, little fireplace there. You're in the Christmas spirit with yeah. the Christmas tree and the Santa Claus. You're looking good there. Yeah. Got the Henry rifle right behind me, too. There you go. Oh, very nice. <laughs> how you all doing, man? Billy, good to you... see you guys. Good seeing you. Billy, see I don't you know too. if you realize it or not. We this show is uh, we talk about it's probably got as much viewership as anything in the pulling world right now. We're very excited and proud of it, but it's all about our guests. We announced a fan vote for the first time for our first ever fan pick guests, and we want to choose from the unlimited class. I don't know if we told you this, but you are a runaway victor in this. Like the the people spoke, you are a man, you are a fan of the, the pulling fans across the world, Billy. So congratulations for being the first ever fan. Well, vote no shit, guest man. I'm the, the I'm the man. Fashion. <laughs> you're damn no right shit, you are. guys, we're, I'm we're the get... dude, man. I'm it. No, I'm just kidding. Well, we right. figured we, we have to be... give you a little bit of time to talk. I know that you've been cut short on a few of your interviews. Um, yeah, right. Because they're 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 a little afraid maybe what slips out your mouth, but I think it's hilarious. So this is your open ticket hey. to say whatever you want, or you do not have to answer anything. You know, if you don't want to answer a question, we'll let it go. And that's fine. Chase uses it all the we time. Call, he, he he just we call it around. the Adam button. Yeah, we call it the Adam button. If you don't want to to answer a question, just refer to the Adam button because Adam. Hey Tyler, turn the answer hat around. Answer questions. <laughs> now Tyler, turn it around. Turn yeah. it Does what it's told. Now I know you better. <laughs> yeah. So, you guys, so yeah, really you guys, I, in opening, I want to do one thing. Please let me have the stage for a minute. Sure. I just want to say one here. thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to, in all due respect. In behalf of Dave Schreier and the family, 
my condolences and the, my family and everybody on the East Coast up here in North America, uh, wherever the fuck we are, Siberia. Uh, no, we're not. It's cold yeah. and snowing here. Anyhow, our condolences go out to the Schreier family and Chase. You know we're going to meet you guys out there. I'm flying out to to uh, we What's can't that? we can't get out to the uh, to the uh, church thing, but we're going out to Ambassador Park. And uh, just want a, a moment for Mr. David Schreier, who did all gobs of great things for tractor pull. And there's not enough to say about that man. He was 40 years I knew him. Every time I go to a tractor pull, my son, Billy, right here, and Wayne, Wayne Keith, my, my mentor, who kept the shit running. I don't know how the hell he did it with the thrash and I did on that junk. But he, he kept it going. But uh, our hearts go out to that family. That guy was unbelievably the most impressive man I've ever known. You don't realize that till he's gone, but uh, everywhere we pulled into, he would come and greet us and with his little tiny white golf cart. Not that he was a racist or nothing, but he had his white golf cart, but he was cool and yeah. he'd come up and we had a good time. Always had a good time. Okay, it's your show, take yeah. it away. Cheers, hey, on behalf of that, Billy, I think we'll all do a cheers to that on um, the no practice. Cheers to, uh, the Schreier family, Mr. Mr. Schreier, thanks for those words, Billy. Um, yeah, he kept her afloat there when it was uh whenever it was looking busy. We have to we have to give it to him for you know keeping NTPA and WPI going. He was uh definitely uh will be missed by all the pullers and uh, the fans. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know we're here and to you talk know, about and you know, Adam. Yep, Adam. Not I want to interrupt you. Not only him, but. Uh, I guess this is one of them. I didn't know what a podcast was. I'm going to back up a little bit. My kid Billy comes up the other night when, when you had uh, Simon's on. And he goes, hey, Dad, you're going to love this shit. They just had this cool thing on, a podcast. And I'm like, oh, what's that, a new kind of soybean or something that they're growing in the Midwest? <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no. Oh, Dad, this is cool shit. <laughs> they got this pot. And Simon's were on it, RJ and, the kid, and, uh, and Brandon. And I'm like, what the f fuck are you talking about a podcast you can't say that for oh no. you can't can yeah. i swear or no it's oh, no, 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 no. This is, i'm not sure you, you, you do whatever you want to do we try right. not to talk about oh, politics right. but i think that'll all probably right. come I up too that was good <laughs> so he's still, i i swear to god i knew nothing about this stuff until the other day and he's like man they're doing a new thing out there in the midwest a podcast i'm like is that a new kind of soybean because they're always bragging about their goddamn soybeans Right. <laughs> so now hey thanks for introducing me to this pbr to podcast yeah so yeah, actually yeah, let's just let's just go in on that so for everybody who don't know give us a little background information you live in new york <laughs> in in the albany coyman's hollow area correct i'm sorry yeah i do but we're on top okay. of the mountain yeah yep. you're on top of we're the mountain so everybody. can you can you tell our fans exactly what wm beers does as as far as like your business, what do you, what do you do for your business? We steal from people. We take shit. No, I'm just <laughs> no, kidding. <nice. laughs> no, Brittany, hey, Billy, Brittany, your local yeah, legislators are probably watching. Brittany, oh, Brittany, you Brittany, gotta come in. Come here. here and say goodbye to everybody. Come on, say goodbye. She's going home. She helped us Brittany. set up this podcast. For those of you who don't say know, Brittany Adam. is Brittany is Billy's daughter. Who, <laughs> Who set up the podcast? Yep, uh, the soy being the Midwest form tonight. So, yeah. Brittany, thanks for your help with yeah. this. Yes. Yeah, Brett. So that Brett, Chase so, guy knows who she is, right, so, Brett? So, right, so what we do? Yeah. Go ahead. Of Alan. course, he does. No, I was going to say, besides stealing from people, what do you do? No, we're, our business started some uh, when I was about sixteen years old. Got booted out of high school. Because of tractor pulling, you want to? Can we go into a lengthy story about that? Yeah, shit? go ahead. This is what it's for. Absolutely. All right, all right. I'm in high school. I'm 11th grade. My buddy, my buddy says, you know, I buy an Oliver. I got an Oliver 88 farm tractor back here on our little 130 acre crop farm, and my mother and father are going to Florida. That's been like, I mean, shit. Um, I was born in 61. I had to be like, what, 70 something? 45 years ago, 50 years ago. So they're going to Florida. My my father and mother were tractor pulling, and that's when the Banners and Engler and all them guys pulled in Florida in the wintertime. Shit, the minute they left the driveway, I took my Oliver 88, and I cut that thing up, chopped the motor off the front of it, welded some iron to the front of it, and I had two Oldsmobile cars I bought, and I bolted two 455 Oldsmobile motors in it. 
This took about two weeks, and I finally go to school. And my buddy says, "Hey, we better go to school." They're starting to call. That's before cell phones, you know. So my parents didn't get the call. They're in Florida. <laughs> We're out of school, bolting this thing together, having fun. That's when Johnny Shaw lived not too far from me, out in Fulham, New York, and he was the guy that kicked ass back in the day, out there in Bowling Green and different places, and you know a few other guys, and and uh, we we built this hot rod that didn't go nowhere, but we had a twin 455 <laughs> Oldsmobile. I mean, we had Lovejoy couplers and all kinds of junk holding this thing together, but we actually drove it. You know, we didn't ever hook to a sled anywhere, but my father comes home from Florida and he's like, hey, uh, you had to see the banners were down here and we're doing all blah, blah, blah. Hey, Dad, I want to take you out and show me my tractor. What are you talking about? He goes out in the garage and here I got this Oliver all cut up and the 455s bolted in it. Oh, damn, man. He made me go pick my apple with him and beat my ass for it because I cut my tractor up. <laughs> it was my tractor. That's how you beat me up for it. <laughs> so I go back to school, and the principal walks me away. Not US9W, down there just south of Albany. It was Ravina. It was up Ravina Queemans High School. And I was, at, you know, before the Tommy Boy movie. Remember Tommy Boy movie with, uh, what's his, Chris yep. Farr? Oh, Chris Farr. Of yep. course. Yep. All right. Of course. Of course. Yeah, I beat, I, beat, I beat Chris Farley out on this one because I got called to the <laughs> office and he had little fire trucks and shit on his desk and I'm ramming them into one another <laughs> and playing, <laughs> like acting up. And I'm not even drinking because I never drank back in them days. Of yeah, course. Thank God. Thank yeah, God. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that, right? <laughs> so it's a, I think it's 10th grade. And he goes, will you please leave my toy trucks alone? And he was a little short Italian guy. Cool as shit. Nice guy. He says, come on, let's take a walk. I ain't getting nowhere with you. And I'm like, all right, let's take a walk. So we walk out of the high school in front of the four receptionists. And they said, oh, boy. They look at me and they go, this ain't going to be good. He's walking you out of the high school. And I'm like, hey, who cares? I got nothing to lose, right? <laughs> I, anyway, it So I follow him down the sidewalk, walks me out to the road, and he goes, it's US 9W, a state highway. And uh, now there's a red light there. and There wasn't then. There was a yellow line. And he says, uh, see that yellow line out there? I said, yeah. He's like, go stand on it the rest of the day. And I'm like, yeah, that don't work for me. <laughs> so, def you know, Adam and Tyler and Chase, this is a bizarre story. This is amazing, bizarre story. My old boss, the first guy I went to work with, I walked up the back road from high school and I got a job with a Callanan Industry Company, which is owned by Old Castle these days. And it's a nationwide Irish company that owes all the uh, asphalt cement companies and, and highway companies. Big, big company. But back then it was Cal Callanan Industries. So I went up there and I got a job. This is the old guy, John Callanan. I was a young kid. He was an old guy. He was like 35 years old. I'm a young kid. Gives me a job up in the quarry working on Mack dump trucks and working in the, and drilling, following this old guy, Tommy Marcel, around the stone quarry drilling holes and blasting for uh, rock for a stone for it. I'm like, I'm liking this for a whole year. I'm living in a 20 foot container, 20 foot container, seed container with a wood stove in it, going to the store. I had two paychecks. I worked a day job drilling and blasting and the night job working on Mack trucks. So this went on until I was about 18. The day before I was 18, July 2nd, I was 18. July 1st, he comes up, and he was a big old guy. Grabs me by the throat, puts me against the wall. I just found out I've been working with an underage kid for a year and a half. And, you know, he's in trouble, <laughs> but he's not. Back then, it was no big deal. The labor so, laws were a little bit easier, huh? Way easier. I had to, you know, the greatest life ever. If you could tell a kid this shit today and have him do stuff like we did, I'm telling you. My point of being is two and a half months ago in Toma, Wisconsin, he lived in La Crosse. He retired and moved to La Crosse, was my best friend. He always came to Toma and watched my tractor pull. He retired in New York and moved to Toma with his daughter. Her name is That's Mary crazy. Pat. And I went out to La Crosse and I buried him two years ago as his best friend. And I'm flying back out to across Saturday morning to 
bury another one of our best friends. And that's just that's bizarre that that happened. Right? So that's crazy. Did you purchase so I to get that did off, you, off my chest? You worked for that guy? I mean, in, in the uh, explosives and all that stuff. I mean, did you work for him and then buy him out? No, no. I worked for him for a, a couple of years, learned a lot of shit, went on the road crew, did some road work, and then I went off on my own and uh, started my own companies back in, ah, shit, back in 84. 84 or something like that in the Port of Albany. We moved our business, cleaned up some scrap yards, moved into Port of Albany, started the recycling company. The beers company is the number one company. Then we started the uh, aggregate the company. Yep. That's still the beer company. But no, BBC Aggregate Company, yep. then, which uh, is a stone quarry. CD Man. We have a stone quarry, which is BBC, BBC Aggregate. We blast and drill and crush stone. And that's what me and yep. Billy had me doing today in a fucking excavator with no heat again. Yeah, no, I love my kid. <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, so, you're still out there yeah, boots I, on the ground working every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he works every day. Uh, I don't oh, yeah. And then we have the garbage company, which is huge. That's our, our rail to garbage. We're the only one in the area in Albany, New York, does that in the port of Albany. We have a yeah. C&D transfer station. We're opening another one, and then we're working on another one in North Carolina right now, but we're opening another one in yeah. southern Albany County. But we load garbage from rail or from floor to rail yeah. and send it, I'm sorry, but to Ohio and Virginia and other places by rail. We have like 150 rail cars. Yep do garbage uh, about 600 five three now what kind of garbage are we talking garbage. about we talking about garbage that's recyclable or are we talking about no just we, do, we, garbage? Do, we, we do yeah. we do recyclables but it's c and d and uh and it gets uh we do like 35 to 45 percent recyclables and we try to recycle as much as we can but labor is the problem as everybody has the same problem up here but uh, we're, we're doing as much as we can recyclables, but then at the end of the day, it gets compacted. We have trash compactor that runs over on our big garbage floor and it's all in cover, uh, undercover. And then it just gets loaded on rail cards and tarped and it head, hits the gotcha. Ohio, Lordstein, Ohio, yeah. and other places. So uh, is it true so, that- And then land clearing, Billy, that Billy, Billy, Billy runs Billy runs the land clearing companies and the crushing companies. He, he's in charge of all that. We do a lot of land clearing, big, you know, grinding jobs. I think jobs Tyler's, for, uh, I think Tyler's got the uh, question here that we're all wanting to know. Is it what I think it is, Tyler? No. Is it is it that? true that a lot of recycled products just end up in a dump anyway? Yep. No, it, yeah, that's Very true. true. You know, China really? shut the whole key off to it. I, I'm going to be honest with you. China shut the whole shit yep. off and we got bales of plastic and stuff that's like that just comes and we just load it. Okay. No, I'm good. Wow. Nice. Wow. So you just no, ship just, all the trash to Ohio where it belongs. Exactly. It, it, yeah. Hey Billy. Well, later so in the show, I, Billy, we'd love you know, to get your the, comments on I have a question real quick for you, Billy. Later in the show. Huh. Um is it true that at 9-11 that you had to take care of some of the waste from 9-11 or can you explain to me maybe what that was yeah, about i we were not allowed to discuss that period whatsoever oh really i had no idea got you yeah i had no idea yeah. Yeah. it's just something we're not I allowed totally to understand talk about. Absolutely. and anybody that was involved gotcha. we, we were involved a little bit not not very major but it was uh that and that's that's yeah, terrible. So, so, so think about so, all the time. And that was Billy, our, that was our. We, that's why I run that, Adam. That's why I run yep. that sticker on my tractor on my semi. Never forget nine one one. And I'm going to tell you something. As sad Absolutely. as this is, if this country keeps going, not to get into politics, if we keep going the way we are, we're going to see something massively bigger. Way than worse that. than we this. Gotta, yep. We got to straighten this shit out now, please. Gotcha. Thank you. Well, yep. Yep. well, we'll hold it. We'll hold a political session for you later, Billy, and get your thoughts on China. Uh, but not to take away from that, we have 300 plus people watching currently watching you, Billy. Uh, fans, okay. please send your questions in for Billy. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make sure we haven't done a good job. We're gonna make sure we ask your questions to Billy. At least two or three of them in the show. Uh, but thank you for your participation, Billy. I love hearing your background story. I never heard that. Uh, it's like watching a Disney movie. I really appreciate that. But now. I think Mr. Tyler has got some really important questions he needs to ask you. So, Tyler, please uh, lead with our next segment. 
Yeah, Billy, I'll be honest. The uh, thought process behind these questions were just a quick, rapid fire, one word responses, no explanation needed. Uh, most of our guests are kind of hard to crack. So this was going to be a segment to try to get them loosened up. But I mean, I feel like I could just sit here and not say a word and listen to you talk all night. But nonetheless, we've prepared it. We're going to run it. I'm going to ask you questions, quick one word response, and then we're moving right along. If you were stuck on a deserted island for a year with one puller from the unlimited class, who would it be? David Richardson. Fair enough. What was the fastest speeding ticket you've ever gotten in your life? 95. Not bad. Water. Biggest in purchase you ever made that was followed I by I just regret. got away. I got it last year, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, big, big, biggest purchase you ever made in your life followed by regret. Oh, shit. That's a hard one. Boy. Rapid fire, baby. Come on now. More wagon. <laughs> oh, pulling tractor. <laughs> a pulling tractor. No, they were all good. That's they fair enough. Good deals, man. I, damn. Okay, what about man, your that's favorite? That's a hard one. Your, your, uh, no, your war wagon's fine. What about your favorite breakfast cereal? The people want to know, damn it. Tell us your favorite oatmeal. cereal. I love oatmeal. I'm on an oatmeal kick. Oh, God. Awesome. It's not even Come cereal. On. Most my favorite, ever my, favorite cereal, my really honest to God, my favorite cereal is Life. Life okay, cereal. that's fair. Like What's, the most amount? <laughs> <laughs> What's the most amount you've ever lost gambling in one day? Mm. Oh, fuck. 45,000 bucks. Decent. What <laughs> mini rod puller would be easiest for you to beat in a fist fight besides Ken Benny? <laughs> Fuck. Oh. I wouldn't want to pick fight. one. Come on. Right. Them mini ride guys are cool shit. I wouldn't No, you got to pick one, damn it. This is rapid no, fire. No, I like them all. Shit. Fuck. Pick one. The Why easiest. do you do shit it's like that? that. That's crazy. Tyler Slaw. No, I wouldn't want to fight Tyler Slaw. He's where was his fucking Don't ass say ass. woman cuz then you'll be a woman beater, so you're not yeah, doing no. that. No. I like all them guys. That's all. That's a No, but bit. who no, would I be the easiest? That. Who would be the easiest? Who would be the easiest guy to beat in a fist fight? In I'm going to say something. Class. I don't like, but I like the. No, you're going to put me in a bad spot. No, ah, come on fun. now. Got, this is a. Oh, fucking, you're you're right, in a bad. Denny horse. You're in a bad spot when you came on this yeah, podcast. Denny horse. Denny horse. Let me oh, fight boy. Denny horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. You guys you're are going dickheads. for a weekend. No, we're on to the next question. Enough. Weekend and a romantic. That's not fair. <laughs> No, hang on. Next question. Next next question, please. Weekend okay. and a romantic bed and breakfast. And you're going to spend the weekend there with them. Who are you going to spend it with? Biden or Putin? Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid fire, Billy. Rapid fuck fire. You guys. <laughs> well, uh, racist come on. Well, racist. Come on. Tell her. Since David has, you uh, what's the vice president's name? Ooh. What's her name? Kamala, David's got Kamala nah, Harris. Kamala Harris is not I ain't option. fucking spending no time with none of them. You're on your own with that one. There you, there you go. That's the best answer. <laughs> Rapid fire. <laughs> All right, he's going to play the Adam card on that one. All right, last and final question, Billy, and arguably the most important one you'll be asked tonight. If you had to spend the rest of your life with ten women in their twenties or ten golden retrievers, and neither one of them would age, would age which group are you going to pick? The 10 women in their 20s or the 10 golden retrievers? Take the 10 golden retrievers any fucking day. That's yeah. my boy. That's right. <laughs> I got three of them. Lay, the three laying right here right, right here. now. <laughs> Tell Smelly us about your Tom. beautiful dogs. They're they're great. They're right here. Smelly's right here. Smelly, the dog that walks himself. Yep. He has a leash, but nobody ever holds it. Nope. He goes where he wants. He runs a driver's meeting, doesn't he, Chase? Yeah, he does. I'm glad somebody right. does because I think some of the people in charge don't know how to run one. Yeah, those drivers right. sometimes. Billy, yep. Billy, tell us about this one's not rapid fire. You can elaborate on it. Tell us about how okay. you met Wayne, Keith, and uh, you know, your guys' relationship, what it's blossomed into, and what what you know he means to your guys' team. Oh my god, he's Wayne Wayne Keith is a he's a he's just the god. He's you know the the amazing guy that back in the day he's, he put uh, five Chevys on. You know back in the Reed day in Connecticut, Reed 
motorsports. I didn't know him back then. And uh, I had, I think I was back with a mini rod then. I had a, my mini rod with a Rodak on it and, and uh, with the Backman heads. I thought I was cool as shit because I had bat on a, on a Rodak. Backman rat, did quite dude. Help. Yeah, I was a rat man. They called me the rat man. <laughs> and uh, it was all cool. We had fun and I ran into Wayne and he got done with Southern Thunder and uh, the Reed guys, they, I guess Brian or the Reeds, one of the Reeds committed suicide and Wayne went on to work somewhere else and he was, Wayne was a friggin' genius. He was, you know, he was a uh, rain man. Remember rain man? We still call him like the rain man guy. He's got Wayne's world and rain man. And <laughs> he's got this nice little motor room down in my shop and he comes, he got an apartment upstairs and comes every week, works three days. He leaves three and a half hours away from here in Manchester, New Hampshire. And one day he popped in. Bi- is it New Hampshire it, or is it Connecticut where Biden uh, vacations? No, no, that's in Nantucket. That's in Delaware. Nantucket, yeah, Delaware. I knew it. I knew it. it Adam, yeah. Adam, you, Adam, you can't get away no, from no Biden, no Biden, no Biden shit here. There's no, no Biden. There's, there's none. There's none of that shit. Right. But, so, but, okay, but with your, Wayne, your question do, was, do, do you do you hold it against Wayne for working for the uh, sassy company for a couple of years? No. You know, he. I was, Adam. I, I I went through a bad divorce. You know about that, right? A little yep. bit. Sure. Absolutely. I went through a divorce. It was a setback, and my wife was absolutely amazing, beautiful lady. But it was just one of them things, and and uh, she moved on, remarried, and. I, I parked I parked the shit for a couple of years. I had brain surgery, a cow. I, I raised black Angus cow. I have beef farm here, and uh, putting in a bison farm too. Right now we're building a fence for bison <laughs> on top of, of the mountain. But uh, yes, uh, yeah. went through a little bit of little bit of brain surgery, massive quite a quite a brain surgery, and I took some time off. And one day I called Wayne back and I said, hey. What do you want to do? And he remarried this beautiful lady, Denise, a lovely lady. What about the nephew? And, uh, he worked. He, what's that? What about the nephew? You see what the he wife? did there, Billy? Denise he played and on the word Denise, Denise and the nephew. All oh, no, I sorry, oh, sorry, no. Billy. I got no. all these old dad jokes now instead of a dad. Oh, you guys got oh, me you, all mixed yeah, up. I'm, like, I'm what, trying what, to help what, him out here. What are you talking about? <laughs> No, yeah, so he, he, he remarried. I know I jump all yeah. over the place, but he remarried, Love and, it. and uh, we went through a little breakup there, Wayne and me, and and he, he was a whopper he, sassy. No, yeah. he, he he built five hundred, and he yeah. called me one day. He said, "I built five hundred and twenty-six Hemis, and I'm ready to quit." I said, "Buddy, I just oh. I'm got my I got my game on." I said, "Let's build a tractor." So we built the stampede. He came over, and I said. We built Stampede, put, put the thing together. back together, and we came out and played for a couple. It was competitive, and we we played the screw blower thing and went back and forth, and it was fun. First guy with screw blowers at the time, correct? That's yeah, right. He he was, we were. Yeah. We put two on, and it was a it was an ass kicking, buddy. And I, you know, Adam, I want to back up for a minute. I want to I want to thank somebody very special to me. That means a lot. Is the uh, there's two people is uh, Steve Bollinger and uh, Brian Diekman and his father. What was his dad's name? Shit. Tommy. Gary. Gary. Gary Diekman, Gary Diekman and, to- and Tom Bollinger. Gary, 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 Gary. Yep. Yep. And, and also Steve's dad uh, was, was a player. But every time I walk to my mountain and your Adam, your mom was here and spent yep. a week and we, we, entertained your mom for a week and it and was Pam, fun right we walked. didn't pam come with her yep yeah pam was here yeah we had a good time and robin and them all played and had a good time but we went over on that side of the mountain over there and it's the highest mountain in albany county and there's a placard in the mountain it's about that big a brass piece and a piece of concrete it was put there like in 1959 and it's way over by the cell tower there's a communication tower over here that's on my property and the elevation is 1,710 feet. And every time I look at that, when I walk the dogs, almost every other day, I look at that placard, and I always think of Brian Diekman and uh, Steve Bollinger. 
And Stevie Bollinger gave me the slot to come to the Ender League this year. And man, I can never thank that guy enough. And we'll talk about that at, at, at a moment, but that's another whole story about the Ender League. Yes, but sir. That's, Chase, that's you just got something any questions? I popped up. Billy, we always like to ask our guests, you know, we travel thousands of miles, you in particular being upstate New York, thousands of miles on the road. And I'm sure you're a guy that yep. always abides the law and everything you do. Uh, so nobody would ever question that character uh, quality of yours. But there's always one that always one crazy travel story from uh, the roads of be, from the, from being up and down the roads yes. going going to <laughs> it from a tractor pull. Tell us tell us the most memorable slash craziest story you've ever had traveling to or from a tractor pull. In all the years you've been doing it. Semi. Oh shit! There's so many, but yeah, this to, one. This there's always recent. all good stories start with oh shit. No, yeah. this this one's pretty recent because I can't remember a lot from no, the past. I, yeah, I've been in shit ton of trouble, been arrested, and yeah, he's jail. been arrested and shit. stuff. He's got a lot of stories. Shit. Uh, this we won't, we won't, we won't, we'll two. keep those stories silent for your potential sponsors who are watching. I'm driving out uh, this year, and there's a friggin' Subaru from Vermont in Indiana mm. ahead of it in the passing lane. So this went on for about 40 goddamn miles. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I start blowing the horn. Would not get out of the passing lane. Put my lights on. This is about 530 in the afternoon. This is a cool shit story, actually. I <laughs> think about it. <laughs> <laughs> The douche finally pulls over to the right after passing the car. Because, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm on her shit. I didn't know it was a her. I thought it was a dude. A trans. Hat was on backwards. It's like you, Tyler. I was on like that. <laughs> so, so, finally pulls over, and I'm trucking right along about 85, 90 miles an hour, coming up to Fort Wayne. All of a sudden, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, blue lights, man. And they're coming. They're coming fast. Pull over nicely. Pulls over behind me. Ten miles go by. I finally pull over. To shoot behind me. Comes up to the passenger side of the Peterbilt. Roll the windows down. Smelly. Smelly's in the front seat of the Peterbilt looking out. Smelly always saves me. The golden. You know, right? Smelly's his dog so, for all you fans that don't know. He's not yeah, talking on a girlfriend smell. or a wife or anything. It's his dog. <laughs> yeah. Smelly, Smelly's in the driver's seat with me and and uh or passenger seat alongside of me <laughs> and the cop comes up and he goes okay i'm gonna ask you really really quick i want to hold this quick was you tailgating a subaru i said yep we're vermont plates yep yes sir. i said yes sir i was i said dumb son of a bitch and liberal was in the left lane for about 40 goddamn miles <laughs> are you going to track your pole right now i said i am i'm going to toma wisconsin this was the first race this year <laughs> goes are you are you are you pulling in fort recovery ohio i said i certainly am that's my plan what do you got for a tractor i told him he goes okay i'm gonna sit here and talk to you a few minutes about tractor stories but i gotta just make like i'm talking to you and i'm gonna let you go because i like you <laughs> it was an indiana state trooper we had a fucking blast so we get to we get to fort recovery the guy comes up he's got a potato farm he's a potato farmer and he talks to us in in uh fort recovery he said man i had i got my ass ripped for not like not giving you a ticket from the barracks because a liberal the, the vermont you know the vermont subaru chick wanted to have you arrested and i'm like yeah he goes you guys i can't believe the shit that these people do to you people driving in a passing lane doing 45 miles an hour <laughs> So we got out. That was a funny. That was a quick one. That was a funny quick one this year. The best one was coming back. So I'm like, oh, there's a bunch of them. The Rockwell one was coming back when I Wayne was in the sleeper, and we're coming back to go to Brad's place and drop the truck and trailer off in Fort Wayne, yeah, from Rockwell, Iowa, and uh, coming through Chicago. But we took that road down below. I forgot what it is, so we bypass Chicago. So shit, we come Chicago. down through, yeah, you know what it is, same shit. Dakota or whatever it is where you don't get quite shot so bad, you only get shot in the head. 
they don't shoot you in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> so we're coming down through there. <laughs> and I do, I do like 105. <laughs> I'm doing 105. It's like 2.30 in the morning. I'm passing. There's nobody on the road, so you're passing whoever's in your way. And a cop, state trooper comes up behind me. So he, pu- he pulls me over. And uh, Wayne's in the sleeper, sound asleep. I'm like, yeah, you're a lot of help. And he goes, uh, tell me how fast you were doing. I was, I said about 90, 95. He goes, yeah, 93 and a half miles an hour. I said, pretty good. He goes, I'm going to write you up. Any reason why? I said, yeah, I got to go to the bathroom real bad. He said, well, you just passed the service station back there. Why'd you pass it? I said, I didn't think it was open. I said, Though you, so you're not jumping out of the cab to go to the bathroom in the weeds? Nah, I guess I'm okay right now. <laughs> So, license and registration. So I hand him that, and I have a couple of police cards that are pretty valuable. He comes back with a speeding ticket. He goes, "Sorry, I have to do this to you." And I said, "No, no problem, officer." He goes, "Got to ask you another question. We had a call, and somebody was with a white Peterbilt was doing real fast through not not too not too far before you." I said. Well, I was doing 105 miles an hour before you caught me. And I said about 30 miles back, I was doing 105, 110. <laughs> Got those fast rules. One more word out of your mouth, I'm gonna put you in jail. I said, have a good night, officer. I shut up. Was that was that the uh, was that the way back from Rockwell after they told you to move and you said fuck you and just loaded your shit up and left? No, I never. That's had a, a whole different. Story. No, that's a whole different story. <laughs> Jeez, Tell us yeah. that one. No, that, that's probably. Uh, Billy, give me a beer. Here, don't go. To actually, Billy. actually, Billy, we want to hear about <laughs> the story. Two, so, two, you used to go to every. So, for people who don't know, Billy is from New York, and it it, it takes him a long time to get anywhere he's going to in a pulling, mostly in the Midwest. So he's looking at 12, 20 hours plus for everywhere he goes. So, you would drive to. Fort Wayne, because Brad Corporals is close to Fort Wayne. You drive to Fort Wayne, you leave a vehicle there, and you fly yeah. home. Um, can you tell us a, a story maybe about uh, somebody said you guys got some chicken or something, and you left some chicken in a cooler in in, in your... Uh... Oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell so us a story, on. please? For, the, for, the, for those that, oh, for those that don't know... What Adam just says, hmm. Billy sometimes flies and he leaves his vehicle parked outside the Fort Wayne area at Modern Machine. And I think this <laughs> was an extended break uh, where there was like a month between events and it was like 105 degree yeah. weather every day. Billy, dr- Billy Ooh. drove a support vehicle. So, Billy, why don't you tell everyone the story from <laughs> <laughs> God. Ooh. I could almost throw up thinking about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we would welcome that. You're allowed. We're all about showing so, people the behind the scenes of pulling, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in a hurry. We're leaving. I always, I always pack the dogs. I bring both of them now. It's Smelly and Toma. Uh, chicken, chicken or steak. I, you know, I raise beef. Ca- I raise beef cattle, so I cook a prime rib for them and slice it up and, you know, bring it with me. And I got a refrigerator in the truck and a refrigerator in the trailer and cooler. So I, I cut up enough meat for for a week because we're gone for a week. So I guess we opted out to go to one event and left a Jeep. I can't remember, left a Jeep out there at Brad's. We leave everything at Fort Wayne at, uh, well, Van Buren, Modern Machine. Truck and trailer sets there all summer. And we fly, either fly, Wayne and me fly back and forth because he li- Wayne lives in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I live in, Al- you know, near Albany. So I fly him back and forth, I fly back and forth. And fuck, one day we roll into Brad's and Brad's goes, damn, I opened your trailer up, man. It's fucking ripe in there. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> the cooler of fucking meat. I took that whole cooler. Oh, my God. It was a beautiful red cooler. One of my favorites. And I, his dumpster. <laughs> he said the garbage guy's coming today. I heaved that thing in a dumpster. I'm like, oh, maggots and shit everywhere. Oh. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> That's bad, dude. That is bad. Oh. It was a month. It was a month old in the. It was a month old in the heat. <laughs> oh, it was fucking disgusting. Shit. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, that was that was gross. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. 
The Rock, the Rockwell funny. story was pretty funny though. I like that one because my kid's in Florida. Billy's in Florida, and he gets a wind of that. Oh yeah, I was down on the vacation. <laughs> and then you know, them guys ended up being pretty. Cool. No, they ended up. Yeah, no, I, he I, came I up like to me. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty cool. Nice guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they wanted to really. Fix it. But I'll tell you, Adam, I'm going to do that shit again just to prove a point. Don't I'm a bit blame of a you. Bag when I don't blame you, man. No, I, I mean, off. I think. I, I think what I like about you so much, and it's kind of like how I feel, like, obviously, I don't know, you've been around the sport of pulling for a, a long, long time, and, and you've seen every facet of it from pulling in the stadiums and, you know, running all around the country and doing everything. So it kind of brings us to a question, like, we always try to ask our, our, um, our guests, if you were in charge of pulling for for a day or or if you were in charge of pulling at all um on your first day or you know what is one of the first things that you would do to help advance the sport of pulling this gets to my question i would bring every 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 national grand national level and no disrespect to state pullers because i was a state puller and i loved pulling state I, I really had a good time with them guys. They were great guys. But then they had their fair share of douchebags too. But the <laughs> Grand National guys are amazing. And I would sit down with every one of them. Not one-on-one. -on -one. We would have the nicest down-to-earth talk like we're doing right now. And that's what David Schreier did. He talked to all of us and he brought us together. And we did good things. But I would talk to all of them, and we would get our heads together. The one thing that pisses me off the most, I've never been, I get humiliated by this. We're in, and every one of our poles and the tracks are amazing, and the promoters treat us utmost, like, with the utmost respect. They're, they really do. They roll the carpet out for every one of us. They're great people. Promoters are great. But our sanctioning body's got to grow a set of balls. We we roll in and we got 12, 10 or 12 unlimited mods. And we are, I think we're, we're pretty well respected people at the end of the day. Why the fuck are we the last class to pull? I don't get it. Right. It really pisses me off. We have 12 of us, and there's 52 supers and 76 two-wheel drives and 83 mini rods. And I love mini rods. I love super stocks. I love them all. <laughs> Pull the goddamn top fuel guys first. We're right. top fuel. Run us first. We, me and Wayne are getting old. I'm Proud 62 pleasers, man. and 70. We want to go back to our hauler and work on our shit before dark. And we want to get up the next day and be done. We got to dump oil out of five goddamn motors. Right. And we got to pull spark plugs. And we got to roll valves. And this bullshit of running me at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Billy Beers is going to be Billy Beers in Rockwell, Iowa. I'm going to back up to the goddamn sled six feet before the sled chain hooks. And I'm going to drive the son of a bitch off the track and put it in the trailer at, at midnight. You put me at midnight and there's nobody in the stands to watch me? I'm going to fuck home, and I'll show yep. you that. Awesome. I've had enough of that shit. I love it. Hey, you know what? So, Finally, so, someone on here. OJ needs to tra change the little clip on here where it's Adam's rant. Billy just went on one, and I love it. So That's wait a minute. Perfect. What happened? You've referenced you've referenced the Rockwell, Iowa scenario. I truly no, the, don't they, know they, what. They, they, no. You didn't hear about Rockwell? No, I didn't. Tell us all about it. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. You can't reference people, it. And, and Billy, them, Billy, them you, Billy, you made amends with these guys, right? Yes. Well, yes, I did. And they and they're very nice. They, they really and I'm going to tell you, Chuck Knapp, that guy's stand up. He came to me several times, and he and he said to me, he said, "We'll make this right, Billy." And I said, "Chuck, I said I'm I'm the guy that comes. I'm a I'm not a New Yorker. Like New Yorkers are douchebags. I'm not one of them." I'm a New Yorker. I'm a redneck. I'm a, I got, I'm a guy. I'm a grassroots guy that came from nothing. Okay. And I built shit and we do stuff. And I know what brown knuckles are. And I know what grassroots is. And when I went out there and that fucking guy parked next to me and Wayne is 69 years old at the time. 
and we had nice. some shit come out of we were putting heat in the motor and we had stuff come out of a motor that didn't look right and i said buddy we got to pull a head off and i i think it was stevie stevie bollinger helped me start the tractor because billy couldn't make it there and uh we seen something come out of a header pipe and this guy's parked next to us and he's blowing diesel smoke into my hauler he had an under underneath exhaust that five inch exhaust out of his truck and he wouldn't shut it off and it's going into the hauler wayne's half dead you know and i said buddy i said go just walk away i'll, I'll figure this out i'll talk to somebody so a guy from rockwell and he says what what's going on here i said this guy's blowing exhaust in the trailer we got to pull a motor off this tractor you know we pull him with a five engine on limited and we're and this guy pulls in and parks next to us right that way right, way down in the bottom by the cornfield and he goes to me he goes well i gotta i gotta i gotta fix for it and i said what's that he says you can go park oh you park your hauler right over there and be out of every everybody's way i said buddy i said if i load that fucking tractor in that trailer i'm driving 24 hours fucking dewey's from here and I'm going to be in the Hudson River. I said, I shit you not. Don't dare me to do it. He turned around for me and walked away. Me and Wayne Ooh. loaded the fucking, we loaded the fucking tractor and we drove out of Rockwell, Iowa. And we didn't stop at Brad's. We went home. I drove to Albany, New York from Rockwell. No shit. When was this? When was that? Three years ago? Oh, was... Don't fuck with Billy yeah. Beers. <laughs> no, I ain't putting up with no shit. No, no. Look... Three years ago. Can we get can we get a bottom, a bottom ticker? Don't With fuck with motor, Rick though, and like Don't fuck with Billy Bears. <laughs> no, no, good for you, man. I mean, guys, literally, I don't, like... I don't mean this. I don't mean, I don't mean this to be a snobby fucking New Yorker because I'm not. I'm a fucking easygoing uh, guy. But you're gonna kill my seven crew chief with diesel smoke, and a, and somebody says shit like that to me. Don't don't fuck with me because I'm out of here. Well, I, I'm I think not it was probably. A fight. It was probably an explanation point on the whole deal. You had an engine you could have put on there to fix it, and we had a motor, to compete. Yep. But you weren't in the best of mood. Guy says something like that to you, you know, and you pack your shit up and you leave. You, you you flew all the way out, got your vehicle, drove all the way out there. Fuck it, you drove home. Just to hell with it, you know. Like, good hey for Adam, you, you want to hear the fucking shitter of the whole? You want to hear the fucking best part of the whole deal? What's that? I do. We get we get this news. We get we get this news later. The fucking guy parked next to us was a local, like eleven miles away. Come in with thirty fucking people in his trailer, and his fucking roll cage didn't pass inspection, and he never pulled. So you got an unlimited wow. mod, right? Because of it. But I will. I want to say one thing. Hats off to Chuck Knapp because he pulled the whole thing together. He saved it. Because I was never going to pull for a championship. And I, I, I think me and Wayne haven't decided yet, but I think we want to run again the whole thing. But we're not decided. We're, we yeah, we broke are, two really, crankshafts. Really, you're and you're running. It's a, hard, it's a, it's a big running. thing to oh, ask of any puller. I mean, if you look at it, a championship run of any puller is going to take some time. And I live in Indiana, dude. So I, I have a pretty centrally located place that i can go out of you're from new york it takes you how long just to get out of the state of new york six hours no we're seven hours to where joe lives joe yeah. joe Ader, oh, joe yeah. Ader. i guess i got a day fucking drive to get to joe Ader, and then we got from there wow. yeah we're hey, i mean hey, albany hey, we're, billy. we're right on the mass yeah. yep billy i gotta ask you uh, because right now the comments and the people are going crazy. There's a lot of love for Billy Beers. Would you mind if I start printing off T-shirts that say "Don't fuck with Billy Beers" and sell them? <laughs> we'll put, yeah, that'd be cool. You go, man. <laughs> no, seriously. We, I think I think you create a brand. Don't fuck with Billy. We, Beers. we do. We need to start up a merch brand right there on the on our along with our No Practice podcast on on the uh, yeah. on our store. Don't fuck with Billy. You can sell it right along with our no practice podcast t-shirts yeah I mean, but you I know what you know hit. what adam and chase be a great and, christmas uh, gift for somebody and, and, and tyler tyler you still got your hat on backwards <laughs> oh yeah absolutely <laughs> all right listen guys the three of you are fucking great commentary i enjoy it but i don't want people to think that i'm i'm not you know that no guy. he's not that i just i just don't think that some people we know I'm you're not, not that, that guy, guy buddy 
I'm not. I just, yeah. I just, sometimes it's like hurts when, you know, Wayne, Wayne is 70 fucking years old and I protect that guy like a brother, man. He means a lot to me. We've been together for damn near 35 years. And, uh, he, he's, I mean, we, sh we, we, sh his wife lets me take him away for weeks and he's just, his wife is a retired school teacher back to work and he's just a great home guy from over in New Hampshire. And my whole family, Billy and my daughter, Brittany, and the whole place thinks Robin loves him. We all have a blast with the guy. He comes and stays with us, drives three and a half goddamn hours to get here, three and a half hours to go home. And he stays three, four days a week. And for some guy to blow diesel fucking smoke in my trailer and tell me to go park down in a field, in a cornfield, I give you a solution. That's kind of a kick in the balls. Right. Yeah, Billy Beers was not having it, and I don't blame you no. one bit whatsoever. Right. No, for exactly. sure. I mean, by the way, the, the, those shirts will be for sale tomorrow uh, at fullpool.us. <laughs> Christmas is around the corner. Don't fuck with Billy's shirts. Don't fuck with Billy. Family. Billy. Billy will send you, we, will send you some, we will send you some for free. Billy, all right, so it's hey, clear let me tell you this. You're, you're passionate you tell about the unlimited. We'll have, auto, we'll have an autograph session at each tractor pole. Absolutely. Unless they don't tell deal. you to move. Unless they take the move. <laughs> <laughs> all good. Hey, did you ever hear what LD Nation did to me? No, I didn't. Tell what us, Billy. That? You didn't. You didn't hear about that. And I think Chase. I think your dad was involved in this too. This is about another whole oh, fucking beer story. Oh, you, you need another one. You, you never heard about this though, Chase? In Bowling no, Green. I, I try not to listen to everything I hear. So me and. Uh, my boys were young. Oh, fuck. I got to tell you a Louisville story, too. Son of a bitch. But we're, we're back in 06, 05. We had the cleaner tractor for, for a motor tractor. And uh, how fuck that go? Yeah, we broke. I think we, we popped a, we kicked a rod or something. I don't remember. And... Uh, we're working on the tractor to like two in the morning. Remember when they had that old black Jeep, the CJ5? I loved the V8 it. In it? Oh, I remember the V8 it. in it. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> we still got that. Brittany wants to bring it to Bowling you? Green this year. I said, yeah. Yeah, we got it. Oh, I think you should. Just put it yeah. That's coming we'll, get to, we'll get back to that story. We'll get yeah, back to the story what? on that Jeep you later. Know. Hey, you, you, want, you want to put that? Let's put that fucker in the Hall of Fame, the Jeep. It needs it. Oh, right, do it. Right, dude? Billy, Billy, hang on. Oh, wait. It's already sexy. it's already in the Hall of Fame. Just stay tuned for now, another ten minutes. And Tyler has a, a fame story with oh, that Jeep. We'll on. get to that later. Go ahead, no, Tyler. Tyler. Stay, stay, stay tuned. Actually, but now would be a good story. time, Tyler. Go ahead. Come back. If oh, the Jeep story. Oh, 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 all right. Well, yeah. I'll be dead. No, no. Hang on a second. Oh, hang on. Fuck, Let's man. wait on the Jeep. So my, so, Let's wait right. on the Jeep story because we need to wait on that. I'll blow through this as quick as I can, but uh, my mom and dad are, uh, my dad's got cancer, loaded with cancer pretty bad. And my mom, they're doing their last fucking voyage to Alaska. So they go to Alaska, they come back and I didn't know they were coming to fucking Bowling Green. He, my dad always came to Bowling Green, my mom and dad. And uh, <laughs> fucking, we're getting ready, we're staging, my mother calls my cell phone. That's when we first were getting the cell phones and he, she goes, hey, we're at the gate. Where are you? I said, you're at the gate where? We're at Bowling Green. I'm like, I thought you were in Alaska. Long story short, we go, Billy, I think one of the kids, Billy was a little kid then. One of them go get him in. And uh, we go pull and we did good. I think we ended up second or third that night, something. Second. And wow. uh, we we had broke some shit. Second, we're working. you got second that night. Second. We were working on shit, putting it back together, Wayne and me. My father, my dad gives Brandon, my son Brandon, the key the for his Dodge pickup truck. He said, take the Dodge because we had a hotel room at Holiday Inn down the street. So he gives Brandon the fucking key to the pickup, not knowing this, that I think it was either my best friend David Richardson or LD Nation took the fucking headlights out of my little black Jeep. And we didn't know it. And me and Wayne jump in the Jeep at two o'clock in the morning to head to the hotel and the back of the Jeep is full of fucking beer cans and we're driving down the road. And Billy, I'm like, you weren't drinking, goes, Billy, you weren't drinking and driving, were you? No, uh, he was drinking then driving. 
that was one of them nights where I only had one. I only had one officer. Okay. Then, All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Give, hey, Tyler, give, yeah. me one of, give me one back there. <laughs> Bill, Brand, Wayne's in the front with me. Brandon's in the back. And the fucking back of us full of fucking beer cans. And he goes, I said, officer, my hotel was right there. We're pulling in right there. He goes, you have no lights. Have you been drinking? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> he goes, step out of the vehicle. And that, you know, the little black Jeep has no sides, no roof. It's, it's all open. I step out and he goes, uh, tell me you're with the tractor pulling deal. I said, Absolutely, we are, sir. That is my biggest fucking nightmare. I hate, and they said, fucking nightmare. He says, I hate that thing. It disrupts my whole town. I said, I'm awful sorry to hear that. Put your hands behind your back. He cuffs me, throws me in the uh -oh. car. Oh, yeah. The whole deal. Yep. I go, and I said, my hotel's right there. I'm pointing at it right there. I'm going right there. Sorry. And then he, then he apologizes to me later. That's when uh, Joe Shiler was president of it. Uh, Joe Shiler, Bowling yep. Green Bank. Yep. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this short. It's quite a long story. It's funny as shit as, 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 after you look back on it. So I buy, I buy LD Nation's trailer. I get arrested and do the whole thing. I'm fucked, you know. So I go to Joe the next day and I said, can you help me with this? And he, hit, he puts me to a lawyer on Main Street. I go see him. We do all that shit. And I think the next night we won the thing. No, we didn't. The, yes, no, second, again. second again. Fucking Nation. Or I Vor there. One of them, Vories or Nation, fucked me out of it. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so we had fun. End of the day, we had fun. We had a blast. So yeah. I, I do the whole lawyer thing, and we buy the trailer off of LD, and um, I can't figure out if it was David Richardson or LD that stole my headlights out of the Jeep that cost me this deal. But the best part is coming. They we got to listen to this. So we're going to, we go, Wayne and me get the whole thing done. It's about November. Um, I got to go back to class at a Holiday Inn Express off of I-90 by Toledo or some fucking place. So Wayne drives me out in the Peterbilt, who <laughs> dumps me off at this fucking Holiday Inn. I got to do a two-nighter. He goes to Missouri, picks up the race trailer. I do my two-nighter, and I got to fucking get duct taped in a fucking hotel room and all this shit that you guys do in Ohio. I don't know. That's quite a fucking strange place, just so you know. But... Anyway, I do the whole thing, get done. I come out of the fucking thing, and Wayne picks me up. He pulls in the same time to get released, so I get my fucking blue stamp or gray stamp or whatever they do. But I got to go to court the next morning at Bowling Green Municipal Court. It's right down the street from the – you know where the store is, the grocery store that we all go to down there? Yeah, in Bowling of course. Green. Of course. Yep, and down yeah, the street is the big once. town hall. Yeah, the big town hall. Yeah. So Wayne, Wayne just picks up the race trailer. We drive in because I can't drive. I'm fucking grounded from driving forever. So oh, Wayne you like Adam Bauer. Yeah, same thing. Adam got arrested in Toma, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know Wayne's where he's driving. Been arrested. I'm just, keep going. <laughs> so Wayne's driving. He drives a fucking semi in and parks it like where you can't get out. And this DWI court in fucking Bowling Green. And so we're in Bowling Green Court. We're the first ones up. We come out. I'm all dismissed, paid my fine. We're all good. We can drive. But I can't drive in Ohio for six weeks and two days or something. So I don't know what it was. Wayne says, I got to drive the truck. And I'm like, no, yeah, well, get us the fuck out of here. Let's go. And the truck is parked over on the side. And it's all state trooper cars parked alongside of us and shit. And he goes, I can't get out of here. I said, get out of the seat. He goes, what are you going to do? I said, get the fuck. back a little bit. They can't see you. Oh, <laughs> can't see me? What? <laughs> oh. Okay, Billy. So you're right. You're right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. CPR. <laughs> so. The, fa goes, the, the, the fans, the numbers keep growing with the stories. Don't let up. Don't let up. <laughs> so Wayne, Wayne gets sell a seat he goes what are you gonna do better than i can do i said i'm driving through the fucking cornfield remember you, there's a soybean field and a cornfield there i'm like mm -hmm. he goes no you can't we'll get arrested get the fuck out of the seat i'm going 
So he drive right through the soybean field out to the highway. He showed you. And we got out of there and he's like, he's shitting in his like mad. He was really angry at me. I'm like, come on, come on we're going. <laughs> so I get the truck off of 75. We, you know, we get out to the highway, 75 up to 90. Toledo, I said, come on, take it. I don't want to get arrested for nothing again and go to jail or whatever they do out there. So he takes the truck, gets me to Pennsylvania. And he drive Wayne drive it at like 55. I'm like, okay, your, your time is up. We stop at McDonald's and get him a vanilla milkshake. And like you're going to sleep or go to sleep. I'm going home. Now I can drive. <laughs> so that was a Bowling Green story. Wayne's the man. And thank, and, and thank Joe Shiler because I love that guy. He's the best. Good and job. Mike Ott. Mike Ott was awesome too. Mike, Mike was the best. So did, did LD Nation and my dad, Dave Richardson, pay for your legal bills? Nobody even fessed it up. I don't know which one of them pricks did it, but I I really think it was LD. It's definitely LD. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Tyler, goddamn speaking of Bowling Green, Green. Tyler, Tyler, speaking of Bowling Green, don't you have a good Bowling Green uh, uh, question for Billy here? Well, I don't know if I want to say that it was in Bowling Green uh, because of plausible deniability. Maybe we'll okay, just say okay. it was at a tractor pull, but it did involve uh, Billy and his CJ Jeep that we all know and love. The Jeep, the Jeep that lost headlights one time, right? Yes, yes. So this particularly <laughs> particular evening, it did have its headlights in. I believe it was around 2006, 2007 ish, maybe theoretically. How old, Billy and I, How old were you then, Tyler? Oh, I was 14. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, I, I think it was about, I don't know, three or four in the morning, and Billy and I were sitting in his Jeep and we watch an individual wander over to a Porta John and get into the Porta John. Oh, and Billy Who's looks Tyler, over. Are you me. drinking it? Tyler, hang on, Tyler. Were you drinking age fourteen? No, you're not allowed to drink at fourteen. So I wasn't drinking. Okay, okay. Carry on. Billy, <laughs> Billy looks over at me, and it's just the two of us hanging out in his jeep. I don't know why, but <clears throat> when I was younger, Billy like took me under his wing, and we would just hang out and have a good old time. And so, like, I'm fourteen years old. I'm just hanging out with Billy beers and his. Billy jeep. drink. Billy feeds beer to a fourteen year old. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> Okay. All right. Sorry. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> maybe, maybe sure. Tyler was your hair long then. Maybe he thought you were smelly. <laughs> it was a little bit longer, you know. So Billy looks over at me and he goes, "Hey, watch this!" And he fires up that Jeep, and he wasn't fast with it. He was gentle with it, and he drove into the back of that Porta John, and that Porta John flipped door down on the ground. And you hear the guy inside of it go, oh, shit. And Billy looks over at me and he goes, we're getting the fuck out of here. And we went right back to his hauler. <laughs> and that Jeep did not move the rest of the night. Tyler, I don't remember that. Billy, can, Billy, can you, you confirm that tr if this story is true or not? I don't remember that. No. You he's told in, me he's that in, story. He's no, had I remember, surgery I remember since then. Was that... Was that when Craig Nation was with us? So, because I remember doing that with Craig Nation. When when that happened, so you've done it more than once. As, as far as <laughs> as far as I recall, it was just the two of us when that happened. Okay, then the other one was when I hit the fucking Porta <laughs> and went flying over. <laughs> Your habitual <laughs> habitual uh, Porta Potty fucking. Yes, guy. this is our. So, we I must know. have a story about so, Porta Johns with pullers. It seems like so, we're lucky. That <laughs> if, if you know that, know it's in there. Oh, so oh, hey, yeah. you want to hear? Wait a minute. Let's finish up a story. I I didn't yeah. finish up. <laughs> Go ahead. The story with the with the DWI was Brandon, my son Brandon. We're in the police station. Cop handcuffed me in Bowling Green, and Brandon looked at me and said. Hey, Grandpa gave me the keys for the Dodge. You were supposed to take that because he knew your headlights were out of the Jeep. Uh. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh. Yeah, I, I, That's I, a rough one. Oh, my I, God. That's brutal. <laughs> Fuck. So many stories. Reba, Daniels. Oh, oh, we got Charles there. Daniels oh, Fiddle my. in the house here. But there's another one that's really good. How about you have uh, Charlie uh, Daniels Fiddle, Fiddle in the house? Oh, yeah. yeah. Charlie, yeah. yeah. Oh, Let tell me about Charlie Daniels' story. Yeah, Hang on, is that actually? I got, I got, Ch I got Charlie Daniels fiddles right, here, right, fiddle right here in the house. Is that oh, the I'm one that he gambled his soul on? Yeah. 
I don't no, know where he was, but he was at uh, he was at Chapel Hill, and me and him sat there and talked for goddamn near forty five minutes an hour, drinking moonshine. That fucking wow. guy could shout moonshine. And he gave me he gave me his fiddle. It's here it's here somewhere in the farmhouse in a wedding venue here. We're in a wedding venue now. That's where we're at. Is that wedding venue there? Is there a, is that the same place where there's a swimming pool? Yep, yes. right behind us. Yep. We're in the that, I think you, you've you've called me a, a time or two, maybe having a little wine or something swimming in the pool. I mean, yeah, when you, live snowing, in I fucking, in you live in fucking New York. There's probably snow on the ground almost now. Oh, snow, snow. right now. Yeah, we got snow, snow right now. Billy, wow. Billy was crushing today. We were crushing stone. Right down the, right down the yep. It's fucking snowing right now. So back to your back but to no, your we uh, in, back to your 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 Porter your Porter John's stories and again Billy we have thousands of people quite the audience that watches this and you know we're not saying these stories are, are true or false but if you are the person that for all these years want to know how you got ran over at Porter John please email us at nopracticeinbox at gmail.com. <laughs> no, no, we we'll be, we'll be happy to send you, we will be happy to send you a don't fuck with Billy t shirt. <laughs> Yeah. Don't fuck no. with Billy T-shirt, oh, and then maybe we'll do an ad, ad event where it says "Don't fuck with Billy at BG" for sure. Billy, Billy, the show, the- you've been amazing. Hey, let me let me tell you this: our promoters, our people, our sanctioning body is amazing, and our the girls. What's what's her name? Uh, Melissa? Is it Melissa? Adam? Yep. yep. Yes. yes. Fucking, she, that girl, above and beyond. She always, she's always so nice. All the tech people are, they, they really go, you know, we got a great group of NTPA people. They're, they're above and beyond perfect. We just all got to take our hats off to Dave Schreier this weekend and say thanks to what he did for the years he did it. He, amazing guy. And I, I want to say one more thing. Gardner Stone, I talked to him two days ago. Gardner wanted me to say he's got bronchitis real bad. He went out and visited with Dave two months ago, sat by his bedside, and he wanted everybody to know that he was with us and he can't make it out there because he's very sick right now, but he wanted to be part of it uh, over to, with his uh, services. So right. make that so make that, that make be clear, sure. everybody. Yeah. Gardner Stone, it's you pulled stuff, you really. pulled against him for a long time. I mean, going back and all the yes. years you've been pulling, you've done it all. You've done yep. the indoor stuff. You've done outdoor stuff. Yeah, yeah. What is your? But I've been I mean, to jail in Louisville. Hey, I've been, yep. I've been to jail in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> Damn, Bill. All right, I, really, I didn't know this was going to turn to. No, I didn't big. know this was going to turn to America's Most Wanted segment tonight. Right. <laughs> Give us the Have you seen this man? Have you no, seen no, this wasn't man? Me, though. I wasn't dead. <laughs> so you went to jail. Yeah. I think that leads us to leads us to a, a next question. I had you and I have talked about this, and you, you mentioned your passion was felt across the world about your desire to have the unlimited be a last class of all these events. I can't say I don't disagree with that, but beyond the that request. What is one thing that you think pulling? First, you know, you made the you, you made the comment to me uh, in a conversation about how you go to your local store in town and people think you tractor pull. They don't know what you're pulling, and then they hear about like what the hell? Like we we got to do a better job of letting the rest of the world know how cool this shit is. So, how do you? What's your way to fix that? If you had to say it in a few words of letting the rest of the world know how badass tractor pulling is. Oh man, I got to tell you something that just happened recently. It was it was over this summer. I don't I don't know how to fix it. There's a way to market it. I think you guys are doing a phenomenal job marketing it. But this down. summer, I said to some of the NTPA guys, I was at an airport in Texas, and I met the guy that does in the morning. It's uh, what's Heartland of America. 6.30 in the morning on Sundays, 6.30 to 7. It's heartland of America. It's about farmers and blah, 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 everything about farming. And I'm a farmer. I, I raise black Angus cattle, and on this mountaintop here, the Angus cattle are down on the bottom farm, 
which is the valley, and this is the top of the mountain. And the bison are coming up here on the mountain. But Heartland of America, and that's the pr producer of the uh, series at a Texas airport, Dallas or somewhere. Uh, and he wanted, I got talking to him, and I'm telling him what we do, and he was all into it. Long story short, trying to get to the point, I, I handed to a couple of the NTPA people, and I said, hey, this guy wants to do a story. Long story short, comes up a couple of segments, a couple of weeks ago, Heartland of America, and they, I think they showed Rockwell, Iowa, or a Grand National Pole, with super stocks or pro stocks or something, burning soybean oil. They did. And it was and, and it was like pretty cool, but what about the fucking rest of us? Right? Yeah, I mean that's a, yeah, I mean no, think that... you've probably had insights into a lot of stuff over the you, you pulled in the SRO days. You, like I said, you've pulled indoors. I mean, it was a, a more of a show back yeah. then. I mean, obviously, I think everybody's yeah. idea is that we got to get our, our viewership out there a little bit more on on camera for like. Fox Sports One, ESPN. I mean, shit. They're yeah. showing, they're showing cornhole. Yeah, we ESPN, need, we need folks. Some good. Like, we, no, we got a better yeah, show than that. Uh, yeah, you can eat a fucking hot dog, sixteen fucking hot dogs, and you, you get seventy five thousand dollars for eating the hot dogs. You can fucking win a demo derby out in fucking Utah, and you Would win a hundred dollars. Like, what the fuck? What, I what did we say the other day? And you turned on there that had a, they had a spelling ago, bee and it on was ESPN. Bucks. Yeah. What did you say the other What's day? They had a spelling bee on ESPN. A spelling bee. Yeah. 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 They were, no, they were eating hot dogs. They ate 45 fucking hot dogs and got 75,000 bucks. I'm like, give me a fucking break. Well, Joe Edders got a no, hot we, dog. We, Is it we, Joe Edders from Coney yeah, Island? Joe Edders famous. Yeah, well, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, Joe Edders is a great competitor, right? No, he's, he's good, good, man. Hey, you know what? Our unlimited class. And I and, I, and again, I, I, I oh. God, God, I hope Stevie Bollinger's listening. No, and, he's... and Brian Deekman, them guys, they're um, Stevie's my hero. I mean, they you you talk about the nicest tractor ever built, that triple Allison tractor. And every time I see him, I said, please give me a. I want one fucking Allison motor. I want to have it on my farm and start it up once a week and just hear it run. I love an oh, Allison motor. So, Billy, have you happened to see yeah. what Steve has has uh, in in store for? I don't know when he's going to run it. I know they have it running, but they have taken an Allison and they have put two eight seventy ones on it, and it's got a gear drive that runs both superchargers, one forward, one backwards. And they plan on running it on one of their tractors one of these days. It has two 871s with both injector hats on an Allison. And he's hoping to run two was, Allisons yeah. with four blowers on it at some point in time. Wow. I have a that video would, of it running. It is fucking, amazing. That would be yeah, Steve, yeah, Steve amazing. Bollinger. That would be him. He's he's the guy, man. He's he, he's he's amazing. He's he's so, truly amazing. And I got so, two. We have two. And Billy, Billy just told me. That Gottman Toys, he, he's got, you got a bowl. Yeah, I got two of them. I, I bought two of them things off of Stevie. Yeah. And I wish the, you the, the original. Uh, yeah, the Gottman Toy. The Gottman Toy ones. And we have two of them. And he's and Billy just fucking sat at me a few minutes ago and said that that company got, got bought out by the Chinese. Yeah, I don't uh, think they're around me. The Gottmans? <laughs> yeah, but they don't make pulling tractors. It's a toy company. It's not fair enough. Right, fair Billy. Enough. So yeah. since this is this show is kind of bouncing off of the uh, you know the full pull brand and the betting, tell us about the little extracurricular betting that you guys this, did this year at the Enderley and uh, how that all worked out <laughs> for you. Yeah, that worked. Out. That, that was, was good. Yeah, that was fun. That is that was it legal? Fun. Is it legal? Well, yeah, it, it's, it's completely not legal, but tell us the little wager you, you made. I mean, it's as, le it's as legal as driving 105 in oh, 18 wheeler. Right. So, five five that, pullers that in the pretty... Unlimited Classic qualify for the Indian League. Billy gets in because Steve Bollinger turned down his spot. So, Steve gave oh, Billy the spot to get into the Indian League. Tell us a little bit. What is it? Uh, Ten thousand dollars a piece, or, or no, a thousand? How much was it? Thousand bucks. I can't remember. Uh, thousand bucks stevie call stevie hey you want to let's back it up a bit let's go back to wellington so 
we're out there with Richardson's in Bowling Green. We leave all our junk out there. So I, Ron and Don, Jason, Jason, David went home. So Ron and Don are staying with us. I gave Ron the keys to my hauler, the Peterbilt sitting right next to them guys. And I said, if you got to move it, move it. Me and Wayne, me and Wayne had to go home for the week. We're pulling back in Bowling Green like on Wednesday or Thursday, Wayne and me. And uh, I go, I call fucking David and I said, hey, where the fuck's my truck? It's gone. He said, Tom LaRue came and got it. I said, oh, great. It's in Canada now, right? And fucking LaRue's got my wallet. Fucking with a Peter, with a tractor in it. So you always, you don't believe nothing nobody says. And so Ron, Ron calls me up and he goes, hey, it's over by where Bollinger's Park in Bowling Green. Over on the other side because they had to clean shit up or some fucking thing. Long story short, we drive it up to Jeff Hertz. So we leave, me and David leave our stuff up at Jeff Hertz, <clears throat> not knowing there's a, we're pulling at Wellington Saturday night, right? One pole, one hook, unlimited it's at Wellington. So fucking me and Wayne go to, we go eat chicken wings with uh, Jeff Hurt and David goes and I think Bone, Bones wasn't there. It was Don and was it you, Chase? Yeah, I was there. No, it was just Don. Donald. You were there. We all went and ate. No talk of a fucking rainstorm coming. Nothing. So me and Wayne go back to the room. We go to bed. All our shit's at Jeff Hurts in Port Clinton, Ohio. So we go back to the room, go to bed. I wake up the next morning, like 5.30 in the morning. I'm like, Wayne, we got to get going. I look out the window. It looks like fucking we're on an island somewhere. It's water all around us. I said, did we get on a boat? Did I get drunk or something? What the (laughs) fuck happened? (laughs) <laughs> this fucking rainstorm come by and dropped 14 inches of rain or something. Cool yeah, I know. Thing. I was at Wellington in a motorhome for the whole fucking thing. I know how much rain we got. It was a lot. <laughs> that was fucking brutal. So we yep. go home. We think we're done. We put the tractor away. We drive home. They cancel Wellington, flood it out. And I wanted one more goddamn fucking hook on that tractor to make sure. We thought we had it. We weren't sure. We fixed fucking six fucking reversers all summer, broken drive shaft, broken rear ends, and I said, we found it. We fucking finally found a problem. But we got rained out. So we go home. So that big question marks in your head. All of a sudden, Stevie Bollinger calls me up. Hey, Billy, I'm willing to give my spot up, but only to you. I'm like, ah, Stevie, I'll call you right back. I love that guy. He's fucking the best friend you could ever have. Yeah, he, he's he's ahead of me. He had he had my spot. He's number five to go. So we're home. We're done. I call Wayne up. I said, "Hey, you want to give it a rip and Enderly?" And he goes, and "I told him what happened, Stevie." Blah blah blah. Fuck, fuck yeah, let's do it. So <laughs> we 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 dropped our shorts, come back, pulled the valve covers off, went through the thing, called Stevie back, and buddy, I, I'll never forget you for this. And and uh, we went to Enderly and. We we won it, and that was that was that was class act. And and David David was two feet behind me, and it was the best thing ever because I said to David, I said we got a five thousand dollar fucking cash bet here. We each throw in a grand, and I said if you win, I'll give you fucking half. If I win, you give me half. No we way. Shook, we oh, shook hands. First and second. Close enough. First and second. Close enough. First, first and second. Yeah. Did the rest of, did the rest of hands. class know you did that? I don't no, know. The rest of class know, know you did that? No. What's his name? Wayne Purser heard about it. He wasn't happy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wayne was good. Wayne was hey, like, what you motherfuckers do? Hey, 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 Chase, how the fuck <laughs> did you ever fucking do that again? Like me and him fucking split you the fucking, fucking ball. guys fucking drank this. That's what, he, that's what Wayne Purser said. That was, so you've, he talked wasn't about happy. Your, you've talked a lot about your other unlimited competitors, and we all know it's a great class. And I think, honestly, 2023 was one of the best years for the unlimited class that we've seen in the better part of 10 plus years. Yep. Yeah. But if you're Ever, the maybe. last, if you're the last hook in the class, Billy, and it's Saturday night at Bowling Green, who do you want to take that win from more than anybody? I mean, a win always means a lot, but if a certain person is leading, it always means a little bit more for you to take that first place position. Who's that person? Well, I got, I got to, I got to tell you, I like all these guys so much. 
I just I just would want to win. I, 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 I can't say there's nobody nobody more, but I, I'm going to tell you something. I, I love for my friend David Richardson to be alongside of me mm -hmm. in the winner circle. And Joey Ader or Chuck Knapp or Steve Bollinger or even Theo Bolds. I mean, the you, whole fucking bunch. Is you can't just listen. Billy, 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 hang on, hang on. You've talked about okay. DUIs, speeding tickets, running over Jeeps or Porter Pots. You cannot act like you're a nice guy and that you're just going to give some politically correct, correct answer. Tyler said if there's one guy you had okay, to be, every who would have been? Answer the question. No, who do you want to be? Beat one of them, Billy. You have to name one. I mean, you are a nice you know guy, but like, come on. You know what? Really the the, only, the only thing I'm going to tell you right now, and at the end of the fucking day, the one thing pisses me off the most. I came so close to winning fucking Bowling Green, and I can't win it. And that's the only fucking thing I want to win is Bowling Green. I feel like Dale learned how to at the fucking yeah, Daytona, Daytona 500. Right. Give me fucking Bowling Green. But I will tell you right now, the one thing I want at Bowling Green. They have the most beautiful fucking flyover ever. And they have the yeah. greatest yes. fucking crew of fucking people there. The blue shirts yep. are amazing. Awesome. Movie. And, the, and, the, and the fucking people in the grandstands. Here's what they need to see. Chase, bring this to the plate at Northwest Ohio Tractor Pullers. Put the fucking unlimited class first. When they do the flyover, put a goddamn unlimited tractor out in the middle of the fucking track. With a good goddamn crew, with a starter on the fucking motor, just like they do with Top Fuel at NHRA, and fucking pop off one of them goddamn motors with somebody who can back up to the goddamn sled and hook to the son of a bitch and go down the fucking track. That's all I'm telling you. America, <laughs> fuck yeah! America. I think Kid it's Rock America. needs to be singing the national Kid anthem. Kid, Where's Kid? Kid flyover, though. You do a goddamn flyover, and you got a fucking funny farm out there with a fucking bunch of fucking elephants, fucking buffalo. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Amen, brother. Put a fucking on Holy shit! <laughs> okay, Billy, you don't have to answer the one guy you had to. You want to beat because you just <laughs> he over, wants to beat them all. <laughs> you over you over delivered. Yeah, yeah. You over delivered. Yeah. The yeah, you know who only person he wants to beat is he <laughs> the only person so he wants. The only person he wants to beat is Biden. That's it. That's right there. Just fuck yeah. that guy. Nah, nah. I love, I love Biden. He's the best. <laughs> oh my the god, dogs are sound Billy. Asleep. Billy, people love wow. you. You're the the t we've we've already showed. 200 plus no not 200 we've already sold two don't fuck a billy t-shirts like the numbers are going crazy right now there's people a jeep there's, love this. there's a cj5 jeep running over porta shitter with billy in the seat says don't fuck with billy yeah. okay. that man t-shirt put the porta potty with the truck in the back hell yeah uh, we're, guess, we're coming up on two hours fans all right there's obviously a lot to really? ask this guy we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna select two or three questions oh, yeah, get them yeah. in we got yeah, adam's going to take us take us in with our two truths one last segment but a couple questions uh billy you're you're no, fucking amazing fine. dude no, I it's, it's, just, like it's just unfortunate kids it's just unfortunate kids can't watch this when you're on here this is a family thing yeah Oh, we'll do a family thing. Sometime. No, we'll, we'll you know fun. what yeah, speaking we'll, of family we'll, things your kids have grown up around the sport you know, I hope to one yeah. day my kids grow up around the sport. I've grown up around the sport. I mean, I trust everybody that's out there. Um, I mean, so I'm sure that anybody that's listening to this, they have no problem with Billy going on rants and fuck this and goddamn that and whatever he comes up with. Because, you know, at the end of the day, they always say, now this is, a, this is research. So this is journalism as we speak. But people that cuss more are more honest people. They're better people. So, Billy, you're a great A in my yes. book. No, uh, guys, I, I'm telling you, 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 <laughs> you know where we're coming from. We've been down this road, and and uh, it's it's a good road. We we've had a good time, and and it means it means a lot to have you guys here with us. Well, hey, Billy, the fans voted you on. We didn't ask you to come on. The fans yeah, voted we, on here, so you need to thank the fans. We now we're, see we're, why Billy, they we're approaching. You. We're approaching fifty thousand different people. 
attended this podcast, it could go to, it could go to five million after you've been on here. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a hard hey. time coming with a, a guest that tops this one. Yeah. Listen, a- a- Adam, I want to tell you something back in Fort Recovery. I don't want to miss this little girl. A little girl came up to me and Wayne and my son, Billy. Billy was there. It was a young girl come up and she said, I just want to I want to be able to talk to an unlimited guy. You guys are unlimited. And Wayne started talking to her and she sat on a little girl. I forget her name, but her mom's name was Lisa. The little girl, I forget her name. You remember her name? Ah, Matilda. Some, some, some yeah, little some girl got on the camera. tracker, sat on, one sit on the tracker. She sat on the goddamn tracker for two hours, and she cursed it. I, I think we ended up second or third that night. Or she, really got, she was so nice. Sat at the track, came to some of the tractor pulls. She's been a fan since, and she's probably watching this tonight. Her mom she, was a... Uh, she worked hard. She worked mom, at one of the hard work Mom, mom was a hard worker. I know she's probably watching this tonight, but she, what a what a good group of fans we got. All, all of us, even the mini rods, super stocks, super pros, the 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 Simons guys, them fucking guys represent tractor pulling so good. They Chuck do. Knapp, what a what a good bunch of guys. Joe Adder, David Richardson. Sometimes I mean, we we. We got some class, class people that deserve a whole lot more than what we get. I go to my local goddamn bar and they won't even hang a picture of my fucking tractor in their bar. Imagine that. Now, if you if you drive to Langford, they put you on every billboard, do they not? I know, right? My local bar, I gave them a portrait of my tractor at the PRI show in in Florida, the the Stampede tractor, with a big thing with uh, who is that? Uh, Ron Caps, Ron Caps, and 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 Dave Schreier and a whole bunch. I gave it to my local bar and they put it behind the bar. I finally brought it to fuck home. I got it here at the at the. Wedding. That's awesome. You were, if you think about it, folks. I mean, what year was that at PRI? Oh six. Oh seven. Oh six. I'm pretty seven. sure Wait, you guys were probably the very first tractor puller ever to attend the PRI show. We're slowly. And oh, for folks know? that are just listening, we just had the PRI show last weekend. That I was, was unfortunate. I couldn't go. But pulling showing a lot bigger, uh, has a lot bigger footprint now than it used to. And, I mean, you guys were at the forefront of that. I mean, you've really, for all the years, have been on the forefront. You ran screw blowers before anybody did. You you went to the uh, PRI show with, with a pulling tractor before probably anybody has. I mean, you've always been there, so... I'm just glad that you're still hanging out with us. I know you took a hiatus for a while and you had to take care of some things and do some stuff, but we just love having you back. When we go to the pools, there's nobody I want to see more the entire weekend than yourself, buddy. You're you're just a class act. Really, really enjoy you. Still Daddy, doing it. And you and your family, you guys also, and, and Bob Miner and the whole bunch. I mean, I think back on it. I dealt with, you think about this, Adam. I dealt with Nick Arias in California and Bob Miner when he was in California and Joe and uh, Joe Fontana. My, I got four and, of his and, motor blocks here. And, and, and for and people and who Joe probably Fontana don't know, they didn't know that War Wagon Motorsports was an authorized Miner Brothers racing dealer. Yes. You were the East right? Coast branch right? of that for a, for a very small, yeah. uh, or for a very, yeah. you know, a few years here. But. It's, yeah. it's kind of ironic how it all works out. Like, I know you guys went through your stuff, and now I'm trying to own that company, but you're still a customer like you guys have always been. And, uh, you know, you guys Adam, are doing awesome we'll things. Never, we'll, never, we'll never go nowhere else. I'm telling you right now. I know it. Wayne, Wayne Keith is a guy that you – and you work with Wayne all the time. Wayne is Wayne's fucking – fucking, what are we going to do when we don't have these guys no more? What do we do? I don't know. That's why we have you on here to get your ideas and and give us the leadership because we're just three young dudes trying to keep it going. You know what I mean? So, well, I'll tell you right you now: are, if any young dudes are watching this act. and they think they're a part of it and they want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year and come to work for a good company and they have interest, tell them to call me. We have we have serious interest in this. We we do. Sure. We want to keep it going. It's a legacy. It's a legacy. It's right. Like Wayne said to me. Wayne said to me one day. We watched the finals in Panoma, California, and we watched 
We watched uh, Connie Coletta in a fucking golf cart. And Wayne said oh, to me, he said, so happy. Wayne said, I want to be Connie Coletta in a golf cart in Bowling Green, Ohio. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? When I back up to the sled and I say it's fucking 10 o'clock at night and there's nobody in the stands and I drive the fuck away? <laughs> yep. He says, I do. I want to be Connie Coletta. Well, hopefully you get there before uh, Connie did or with with uh, Doug winning that championship this year. I have no doubt with the way your that track has awesome. been running that you're that well on it. Daylight, though. People in the stands. It's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. Another thing, too. One of the best things I ever had was meeting a cruiser in a fucking parking lot, driving home from Toma, Wisconsin, with my little white, ugly fucking Jeep. He thought I was a fucking security guy <laughs> in the parking lot of a Holiday Inn. He's there in his snap-on suit, and he, he was just getting done with uh, one of the drag race in Ohio there. I forgot. Nor Norwalk? <laughs> and he goes did you have did you have billy did you have headlights we, in that in jeep i did yes. the white jeep we had to wait now, you, okay. you know yeah, what's really one. funny folks this that. jeep that he talks about this jeep patriot that he drops drives around it's white it's, it's patriot, got a flashing yeah. light on it so it's like a it's got a slow moving vehicle bracket on it it's got a fucking flashing light on it it's all because it goes it's back safety, to the story man. he didn't have any it's headlights in it back up the alarm 40, 4100 Look, bucks. He wants Master everybody Blade. to know he's moving one, around. Yeah. Hey, sit down. Billy's going to yeah. talk to you for a minute. So oh, Billy. I'll talk to you guys. Big Billy's got to go piss. <laughs> yeah, he's got to go take a B. Hey, no, you guys do a good good job, man. I, I, I watch all your stuff. It's pretty good. Well, thanks. What's uh, what's it like having Billy as a father? The, you don't have the big guy now. I'm, I'm like Hunter Biden right now. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, you're that's not. Like. No, 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 well, that's we've all said I Biden like. way too many times this podcast. <laughs> we've said the word Biden way too many times this podcast. Yeah. Tyler, you had a good question for him. Is that yeah, illegal? Yeah, younger Billy, oh, yeah. what's it like having Billy Sr. as your father? Tell us like your favorite story Dude, I'm about telling him. You, man, he he's the, he's the best man ever made. You ain't going to ever beat it. I'm telling you. No, he really is. And the same Billy we man. see the, the same Billy we see the tracks the same guy day to day where you all live. Is that accurate? No, he's always the same. He never changes. Nope, <laughs> always the same. Even, even, even no, when he gets on man. Midwest soybean soybean podcast. Problem is though, it does yeah, it does mess up his his allergies and stuff. But no, yeah. other than that though, I'm telling you, he's always been a great. He's just a wild man. He's wild. He gets well, mad. Here well, tell us a story from your childhood when he was when he was raising you. You got to have a good oh, one. Man. So say if I got say if I did something bad at school. Yeah. He used what to would make happen? me in the middle of winter. He would make me go and stare, just stare, just to make sure everything went right. Stare at like our, we have fruit trees in the back of our yard. So of course. when I was little, he'd make me just go up and talk to fruit trees. You know, that was your I, I got in a lot of trouble. Are you yeah. serious? You had to speak it was to bad fruit trees? In the middle of winter. Yeah, it was bad. Other than that, though. He made you go there and talk to a fruit tree? too bad. <laughs> yeah, I had to talk to a fruit tree. Oh, you had to talk to it, yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Now, what, what other unusual no, punishment were going on there? No, it's probably the worst. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I think that was it. Though. Other than that, though, he's pretty good. <laughs> Other than that, he's pretty good. <laughs> what about you guys? Maybe, maybe Billy, we what should, weird punishments we should, you guys we should find a. We should find a. So, so what's interesting? The polling fans, we have people reaching out to us all all the time because there's like a, it's a crossover <laughs> where people want, want us to come on their podcast to talk about polling. I just call my head. And and the. Us bring them in as the same. Maybe we can get Billy into some parenting <laughs> podcast on how to properly yeah. parent and take Here. your kid out back to talk Here. to a fruit All tree. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, well, Billy. Billy liked talking to fruit trees. So, <laughs> Billy Senior, tell us tell us the logic behind the children being required to speak to the fruit trees as punishment. Yeah, <laughs> 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 They told him about that. Yeah, about we know about the fruit trees. Again, put him out, I'll, tell, him, tell him how you do it. I wasn't lying. Five, he was five years old. He'd give his mother some shit. Yeah. About eight below zero. 
Eight below zero, I'm telling you guys. I looked out there on the side hill and I said, fucking look at that peach tree. Yeah. You give your mom some more shit and you're going out there and talk to that peach tree. Yeah. No, I told and you he guys. La he laughed at he laughed at me and I said, Come on, fucker, he grabbed him out of here, he's five years old. Uh, we're going out to peach tree. You stand there and you don't fucking move until you're done talking. You don't stop talking to that peach tree. For twenty five minutes. His mother, really, his mother, really, his mother really looked really at me after ten minutes. That's enough. I said, not 25 oh. minutes. Fuck that. Then so I went out to get him minutes. after 25 minutes. I said, you want to come in? He goes, no, I really like talking to the beach tree. <laughs> I said, okay, okay another nice. half an hour. It's true story. It's true true story. story. Really, we, so we get requests about, about to come on other later, podcasts. We get requests no, from other right. podcasts. Would you be open... Would you be open to if a parenting company come or parenting podcast reaches out to no. us? Would you be open to go on a parenting no, podcast spin off? Yes, spin off. Okay. That's how you make men to be right. men. Yeah, yes. I love it. He made right. me a man. <laughs> All right, Billy. I love we've got, I'm not gonna lie. We've got another segment. We've got another segment called Two Truths and One Lie. Um, oh, hopefully yeah. somebody yeah. somebody prefaced this to you. So you're going to tell us three statements, two of them being truth and one being a lie. And it is going to be up to the three of us to individually select which one is the lie. Two truths and really one lie. This is the No Practice Podcast. Two truths and one lie. All right, Billy, take it away now, and don't tell us in, anything about a fruit tree because we know that's in, true. And for already. anybody who doesn't know, don't mention anything <laughs> about drugs or anything because our last guest had to take a drug test after he said a, a comment on this podcast. That's right. Yeah. The floor is yours, sir. Take it away. Take it away, Billy. So what do I do? Wrestling. You got to tell two truths. Two truths and a lie, sir. Yes. Please tell us. You got to say two three truths. I'm gonna tell you. But but don't do two it in truths. that order. You gotta you gotta confuse us. You know what I mean? You gotta tell we us have to a figure, lie. All right. We, we need to figure out what, what you're lying about. Okay. Why is he shaking? Oh, oh, I don't know. I was worried, but I'm gonna smell. Smell is shaking. It's making me nervous. Yep. Uh oh. Okay. Stop. He's okay. It's okay. bedtime. That's all. All right, let's go. Tired. What, are, what okay. are we doing? Two yeah. truths and a lie, Billy. You tell us two truths and one lie, not in any certain order. We have to figure out what you're lying about. Which one is the okay. lie? True. Two truths and a lie. Okay, LD Nation. Don't tell, tell us which one. Out of my Wait, say that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Don't. You got to confuse us. Hopefully, not something we know. Yeah, they know that. No, it's not that. You know oh. what's even funnier about this is that we can hear her what she's saying too. So <laughs> yeah, you better change it up on us. <laughs> okay. Two truths and a lie. All right, Chase. Do you want to give us an two. example of how this segment goes? Yeah. 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 Come on, Chase. Tell us two truths and a lie. Uh. Yeah. I. Uh, Smoked weed the last six months. I may have may have uh, started Billy Beers' tractor for him at a pool, and I measured a hitch of a European tractor. Okay, I'm gonna go with the first one's a lie. I don't think you've been smoking weed Dude. for the last six months. UD, oh, I get contracting. It. I'm a UD contracting is going to give you a drug test tomorrow after that statement. B Billy, did you see how we did that okay. there now? Right. Okay, yep. go ahead, Billy. Yep, I get Two it. Two and a lie. Okay, you ready? You ready? Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're ready. Okay. <laughs> I. <laughs> Shit. I got it. Just give me a second. Okay. Okay. I drained my swimming pool. For all you fans that don't know, we, we do, there is no practice. There's yeah, no there's practice. No, practice. no, no I did. I, I, I drained a swimming pool yesterday and put dead alligators in it, and they came back to life. Okay. Yep. And then the day before that, I went out and I took the semen out of my bison, and I put it into a 
Yogurt that. yogurt container. Yogurt, yeah, yogurt container. And then, that's true. So. Yeah, and then before that, I uh, yeah, I took my iPad. Chase Richardson did no, I think that's true. Oh, two truths. Oh, true. one one no, one truth. Yeah, well, that's, all right. that's all true. What I just said. <laughs> Guys, can't oh, answer it for us. <laughs> All, all right, right, all right. I did, I, oh, we got the way. Hey, hey, Chase, Chase, delay. Chase, you know what I really did? I nobody believes this shit. But I get up at two o'clock in the morning. I got this sleep illness thing going on. I went. Well, I have. I have fucking ten steers penned up. They're about fourteen hundred pounds. Nice Angus, ready for slaughter. And they're steers. And I went down to milk them. Yeah, milk them. All the bulls. I did. Nice. Come on. Are you still on? Really? No, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. You're still on. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Pulling fans across the world, this is the No Practice Podcast. We put no practice in, into any of this. So, for those of you, for those of you who think this that we script this, we are going to put a pause in the two truths and one lie. And wait for. Yeah. And say, say like we may never have that same but minute. Billy, it's okay. But Billy, but Billy, you 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 created yes. enough content. I think we're all good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're pretty good. I think what we need to do, we're getting pretty deep in this. We're two hours and 17 minutes in. I think we need to be telling uh, our, our our great audio listeners tonight, people watching on YouTube, you know, find us on Apple's uh, podcast, Spotify, any of your streaming uh, places will be on there. I think it's been a, a hell of a show. We're getting deep in this right now. We're probably going to stay on here a little bit after this, talk about a few yes. things. But, um, Chase, you got anything hey, Adam, you want to wrap I, up here before we get off? Hey, sure, hey, Billy, absolutely. Yeah, of course, That's Billy. what I was going to say. I, if, if you got can any I say comments, a couple things in, clo- in closing? Absolutely. I, yeah. and, and absolutely. Just, yes, I wanna, this is your I, show. I wanna, listen, I want to put a little bit out there to Dave Schreier again. Mean, a guy means a lot to me. And my, my best friend, John Callanan, my first boss I ever had in Toma, Wisconsin. We lost Larry Kester. And we lost Larry Kester, my best friend. Yeah. One of my good. Hey, do you ever, Adam? You yeah. fucking didn't even know. I when you were a little boy, I used to tip your daddy over in the wheelchair. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt this, dude. Yeah. Like we have all kinds of stories about this. We could probably have an entire segment on people with my dad. Okay, that's that's a good I question I can ask everybody because I think everybody knows him. What's your best Larry Kester story? Oh my uh, god. That's good. Yeah, what is your I did. We were in Bowling Green one day and I said Excuse me for doing that. We're in Bowling Green. Me and your me and your mom are having a good time, and your sister was little Ashley. <coughs> you were young, and we're sitting there. And I said, "Hey, Larry." I said, "I loved your dad. He was fucking the best. He he was a <coughs> inspired so many people in the shit he did for me. Oh my God, what a what a yeah. tremendous yeah. story! Tremendous best. story. It just don't right. go away." And don't let people ever forget it. But I walked nope. up to him and I said, well, how do you like sitting in that thing sideways? He goes, what do you mean? I just pushed him over. <laughs> what, did oh. he, what did he do? Oh, he's fucking <laughs> right now. Oh, God. He, you know what? He was a good sport about it because he had wrestling your ass down on the ground, too. You know? Oh, you know what? That man was so goddamn strong. It wasn't funny. Okay. He was a fast. He was the you best. guys. Wait, man. One of these days, I'm going to bring him on the show. But my little boy, when at certain times, looks just like my dad, and uh, he does. he's a very. He's he got does. some very strong hands, and he's he's a very yep. strong boy. Like, it, I just yep. hope that whatever happens, that if that kid's a lot like my dad, I'll be very happy because you know. Yeah, um, dad was a good dude. No, you, he you, he really adored Adam, you. you he proud, really looked you up to be you proud guys. Of your family, buddy. No, he's, he's fucking, really good. Fucking wow. great people, man. Yeah, good, he was, good he people, was really good, good friends. Good, but, you, you, sure. you can't buy that. You no, just your mom's you can't. the best right. too. What does your dad do for the sport, amazing. though? You're fucking amazing. Flip my dad out. The whole family. Flip my dad's ass David, out. Now, would you do that today? Hell yeah, you would. You guys are fucking amazing. The whole bunch of us. I really are. And I'm going to tell you something. Some Bits. bitches want to put me last in the fucking class and the grandstands are empty. I'm fucking driving off the track. <laughs> Fuck all of them. 
<laughs> we love it. And your t-shirt, you know si- your t-shirt sales have gone from no more. Fuck everybody. We've That's sold. Right, Billy. I love my fans. Hey, my fans. t-shirt sales. My fans are fucking pissed. Adam, my fucking fans are pissed. They want to see us at fucking daylight, not at fucking midnight. I hear you, I'm buddy. I'm fucking done. Preaching I'm to done. the choir. Preaching to the choir. The good man. news is, Billy. Yeah. The good news yeah. is the the good. The good news is the more t shirt like we're selling t-shirts, the more you talk. So just keep doing what you're doing. And whenever yeah. you drive the, off that track one day, the t-shirt sales will hey, go we'll out the roof. Time. So we'll do it again. everyone wins. You no, know, next time I'll do yeah. it naked. No fucking yeah. sell a lot of them. Because I got the nicest tits you ever seen. <laughs> well, you can't say that. Okay. Yeah, that. Wah, 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 wah. All right. I think wow. I'll show them. all good story. <laughs> <laughs> all good all, all good stories. All- that in Billy, thank you for everything. This has been a, our best show, numbers wise. I, I anticipate it to go out the roof the next few days. Uh, the fans voted you on here. Uh, do special it. thanks for you doing that. I don't honestly, we, we, we're kind of you know, every week we, we gain momentum, but we, we got to put a pause to it for the holidays. So, uh, um, we're doing here's the cheers to everybody for, for a great time tonight, Tyler, Adam, Billy. Uh, Billy, little Billy, everyone there, it's been amazing. Yeah, uh, tell tell the fans you know, what we're going to be doing now because we're, we're, we're getting close to uh, yeah. the end of the year here and Christmas and everything. Our next show will be when Chase, yeah. So, we're going, Billy. This is not a soybean company, we actually are a podcast that people watch every other Wednesday. Um, <laughs> right. but we're gonna, we're gonna take two weeks off for the holidays and we will, we will be back. Good. January third. So mark your hey, calendars. Tyler, January third, twenty twenty. Oh yeah, twenty twenty four. He's doing a Tyler. Hey, Tyler. <laughs> Looking good, Billy. Well, listen, I'll Billy. see. You, I, I don't know who I'll see, but this, Chase, Chase, I know I'll see you in Toma, and your dad, David, and. Uh, and we'll tune yeah. in. I, I'm telling you. We're gonna tune into your podcast, guys. Awesome. We we are we are the yeah. best, and I know we're all family. We love one another. We do want to, and just like your dad, your dad said, we'll help every one of us need help. We're there. We're family. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And and I can yep. only imagine what our numbers will be like when we have two weeks, three weeks to promote Billy Beers as our guest. So shout out T-shirt to sales are going to be the t-shirts, crazy. The t-shirts, the, the, the <laughs> don't fuck with Billy t-shirts. We're all, we're up to what? 26 now. If you haven't got your Christmas presents, Go to the Full Pool website, buy the No Practice Podcast shirts, secondly, but firstly, buy the Don't Fuck With Billy t-shirts. And, uh, you guys are the best. <laughs> don't I'm forget to really. email the No Practice Inbox at gmail.com. It's been a good time, boys. Hey, Everyone have a Merry lot, Christmas. Tyler. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hey, whenever you're at home, God bless holidays, you guys. Tell your family members. Merry Christmas. Tell your family about the No Practice the Podcast. Let's keep growing this. Everybody that fucking runs with us. Hey, and I forgot to say about the Criswells. They're Chris the fucking Wells. best. They're the man. They're yeah. fucking the best, too. The Criswells or the Griswolds? What is it? They're both great. <laughs> yeah, they're Criswolds. Or what? We're, we're, no. They're Chris fucking Walls. awesome. Oh, they're I thought boys. you said. Boys. You sound, so like you sound like Tommy DeVito. You sound like Tommy DeVito. Adam, give fucking my best friend Bob Miner a hug. I'm telling you right now. Well, dude. Fuck him. Hey, you know what? Oh, Billy, no, I've Billy. Closing. Did I ever tell you what he said to me? I bought fucking Manzo's fucking dry car for Brittany to drive, my daughter. I know you did. He looked at me after I bought it. You remember that, right? I know it. I was, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and he goes, your Asian tracker or drag racing car? And I said, we're doing both. He goes, we're doing one or the other. So we sold the fucking car. That's you right. You're that. still pulling. Nice the best. Oh, you know, I told Dad, no, absolutely not. Adam, do Billy, I like we're going to stay. We're no, going to stay Tyler. on for it. Billy, Tyler. we're going to we're going to stay on here a little bit after this. We're going to sign off for the podcast. Hours. So we're going to stay on here and bullshit, guys, which will be good. No, no, Billy, no stay on here. Stay on here. No, uh, Billy, Billy, stay, is, Billy, stay. Okay. Billy, stay. Billy, stay. Yeah, Chase stay on gets here. mad at us if we okay. go over two yeah. hours. Stay we on. Wrap this up. We got to wrap this up. We're getting at two yeah. hours and 30 minutes. Oh, right. We're going to let the fans happy, off. We're going to continue hol- talk. Ha- <laughs> we're going to no, continue to say happy holidays. We love you guys.
Oh my Merry Christmas. We love you all. This Happy holidays. Thank you, everybody. See you January 3rd. What a shit show. That's a wrap. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the No Practice Podcast. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Stay tuned for the next episode where we guarantee there still won't be any practice. Bye-bye.